Triple eight nine seven one S A G E Triple eight nine seven one seven two four three Larry Elder ReliefFactor dot com studio New Gingrich unloaded on former Vice President Joe Biden said he delivered the most anti American campaign speech ever. Meanwhile, the media condemned Trump's speech as dark and divisive, but did not say anything at all about Joe Biden's anti-American campaign speech. We're going to be talking with Kurt Schlichter next hour. He's got a new book called The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You. Final total. Fourth of July weekend, Chicago, 80 people shot, 15 killed. A Baltimore councilman tweeted in favor of the removal of a police memorial, memorial for fallen officers. Turns out the memorial was not paid for by the union, but was paid for by families. And a councilman wants this memorial to fallen officers in Baltimore removed because, well, it's offensive. The Georgia governor, Brian Kemp, Deploying 1,000 National Guard troops to Atlanta, the president said that any governor who wants troops deployed, he will do so, but it's up to the governors to request it. This governor has, claiming that the mayor of Atlanta has failed to do her job. A CNN reporter referred to Mount Rushmore, where President Trump gave his speech, as a, quote, monument to two slave owners, close quote. But CNN praised Mount Rushmore when Obama was there, praised Mount Rushmore when Hillary Clinton was there. But now all of a sudden, the same monument is a monument, quote, to two slave owners, close quote, says a CNN reporter. I'm not suggesting there is a double standard. A father, after the murder murder of his daughter, praises Donald Trump for calling him and offering condolences. But first, expert Scott Atlas, he's a doctor with the Hoover Institution. We've been hearing about the spiking of cases, particularly in Texas. Here's what he said about those cases, about the spiking of those cases, coronavirus cases. That there's something else that goes unspoken. That is that when you have a lot of low-risk people get the infection, that's how you generate population immunity. This is the mm-hmm. so-called herd immunity. People have been really mistaken about the number of people, by the way, that have had immunity, because immunity is not just based on antibodies. It's based on a larger number of people who have something called T-cell immunity. But the, I do want to comment on the hospitalizations, because when you look more than superficially right. at the data, which is necessary and should be demanded from our public health officials. When you look at Texas, for instance, yes, they have a lot of people in the hospital. But when I looked at every single hospital area in Texas today, 15 to 20 percent of people in the hospital as inpatients are COVID positive patients. That means 80 to 85 percent have nothing to do with COVID-19. And the same thing goes for some of these other states. There are people hospitalized, a large number, because they're tested as COVID positive, somehow they're categorized as COVID hospitalizations. That's a problem. Watching CNN, MSNBC, so you don't have to. And you go back and forth between those two and Fox News, two different worlds. Two different sets of priorities. CNN, MSNB, Hee Haw, both of them back and forth on the spike in coronavirus cases. This state is up. This state is up. This state is up, especially Texas. Fox, we're talking about the chaos in the streets, about the cancel movement, about the destruction of monuments, about police being attacked. Two entirely different perspectives. And 80% of people get their primary news from the perspective emanating from the likes of a CNN or MSNB hee whether it's New York Times, LA Times, Philadelphia Inquirer, Houston Chronicle, any of the Bay Area newspapers, late night comics, where 15% or so of young people get their source of news. I'm not making this up. 
15 or 10% of young people get their primary source of news from the late light monologues. And, you know, all these people can't stand Donald Trump. They fall over themselves, upping themselves on who can trash him the most each night. So if you're watching CNN, watching MSNBC, that's what you're getting. And the American people have made a decision, haven't they? Whether CNN, MSNBC, how likes it or not. The American people have said, we're going we're gonna to go back to work. We, 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 can't, we, we can't shut ourselves down like this. We have bills to pay. And there are also financial and emotional and health-wise consequences. Suicides. Spousal abuse. Drug abuse. Alcoholism. Bankruptcies. How many people have health-related problems because they worry and stress over money? The American people have decided we're going to have to figure this out. We're going to have to coexist. We're going to have to survive, try to develop better treatments and a vaccine. And we've had pandemics before. I've talked to you before about the 1968 one where at least so far, adjusted for population, more people were killed, more Americans died then than now. And we didn't shut down the economy. We didn't mandate that people wear masks, let alone masks outdoors the way they've mandated out here in California. We know more now than we used to know. We know now that the higher risk people are older people. People living in dense populations. We know how to minimize it by social distancing, by wearing masks. Beyond that, what do you expect Americans to do? And the people I watch on television that are, oh oh my goodness, cases have gone up. You have your job. You've got your nice seven-figure job. You You can sit there and pontificate about what other people ought to be doing. And even if and when their studio is shut down, they can broadcast from home. So nothing's going to happen with their lives. Easy for you to say. Dr. Mark Bloom is the president and CEO of the Houston Methodist Hospital. About the spike in coronavirus cases in Texas, here's what he said. Yes, it, it's actually um, fascinating we've, we've, uh, um, and, and encouraging a little bit as well. We're seeing a younger population um, that is uh, both worrisome because, of course, that's what's been spreading through the community, mm-hmm. but it's also encouraging because they tend to get a little bit less sick. Now, let me be clear, they get sick at every age. And in fact, we had uh, a young individual in their 20s show up in one of our emergency rooms coding uh, and and passing away just the other day, which was very traumatic for everyone. So we see uh, all ages get incredibly sick. Um, We have seen mortality decrease overall. It's about half of what it was running in the first surge. Um, part of that is age. Um, a large part of that seems to be getting better and really all the learning that's happened over the last uh, four months or so of what we've been doing. That also means lo- lower lengths of stay, which enables us to kind of manage this surge a little better and lower ICU utilization, which also has enabled us to be able to manage this a little better. So isn't this good news? Cases are going up. Deaths are going down. And then I hear... Every now and then on MSNBC and CNN, you'll find some pundit, some expert that will say that. But then nobody says, nobody does a follow-up question on it. And then you hear, well, it's a lagging indicator. Right now, the cases aren't going up, but they're going to go up later on. So there's hope. There's hope. It may get worse. Keep hope alive. I'm Larry Elder. Larry will be right back. Stay tuned. Trending now on the Dennis Prager Show. If Americans don't embrace some basic moral principles as their culture, the country is over because this country is not homogeneous like Denmark or Norway. The country is heterogeneous ethnically and racially, and in every other way the human condition comes. So it is 
the only way America can survive is if everybody assumes a strong American identity, which the left is destroying, needless to say. And as a result, you don't have America anymore. From many, we. Isn't that amazing? That was the name, I think, of his column. Certainly, this, that, was the, that was the topic of his column. Wow. I saw it early. That, uh, I want you to know it brings me zero satisfaction. With my, so I'm not, I'm not bragging to you. I saw it early. I'm only saying that I did see it early because I think clearly. And I have a strong moral Geiger counter. And whenever it comes near the left, it uh, pulsates. People want to say, oh, look, you know, I don't like either extreme. This is, the, this is the lazy way of not confronting evil. Well, it's on both sides. Really. When was the last violent demonstration on the right? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Obama tore this country down. No one stood up to him. Nobody, because he was black. You need to wake up. My parents didn't teach me that I was a victim. They can turn back voting rights. Didn't nobody donate to us the right to vote? Who's your house, nigga? I didn't call you a nigga. Oh, okay, that's, that's a big difference. Right. Right. Your Uncle right. Tom. Right. And Uncle Tom is somebody who has sold out by embracing the white man. Uncle Tom. Bedouin. Boot liquor. Black white supremacist. Chucking and jiving. House Negro. Coon. Uncle Tom. Coon. Coon. I have a Coon Award over there. Coon of the Year Award. Most black people don't believe that other blacks can be independent, free thinkers. I believe the legacy and the ancestry of black Americans is being insulted every single day. I will not pretend to be a victim in this country. I know that that makes many people on the left uncomfortable. Racist, racist, racial, racist, racism. A thousand cuts of racism. The liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. I never felt that because I was black or I was poor or a woman that I couldn't do something. I grew up being told of my disadvantages, that this country is unfair to black people. The ideology is implanted into you subconsciously to believe these things. It's like a cancerous plague in the mind of black Americans. We're brainwashed to think, well, is it because I'm black? America's not ours, or we got shipped here. No. Our blood is on this soil. We own this too. There should be a pride that we have in the fact that this country was built by many great black men and women. Are you trying to say that this country does not specialize in racism and bigotry? So long as black people continue to have their psyche filled by that nonsense, we won't have an awakening. Trending now on The Hugh Hewitt Show. There is talk, Hugh, and I have it in my story today, about a possible vacancy this summer. We've heard a lot about whether Justice Thomas will retire or not. America, we have a country to save. And now, here's Larry Elder. Yes. Somebody was telling me this last weekend that there are more young black people killed every month by other blacks than were uh, lynched in the entire Jim Crow era. I um, I don't want to repeat that if it ain't true. I find it interesting. It doesn't take away any horrors from Jim Crow and all the bad things that was going there. It doesn't take anything away from that. But it is kind of interesting when you think about how things is going on now. I'd like to know if you could confirm that or tell me the guy was full of c- Thank you. Triple eight nine seven one S A G E triple eight nine seven one seven two four three Larry Elder, Reliefactor dot com studio. Mike Lindell is the inventor and CEO of My Pillow. He wants to give back and is doing so. He's making face masks and is giving them to hospitals for free all around the country. He's also offering great deals discounts for you. Go to mypillow.com, click on the radio listener specials and check out some amazing offers. 
Buy one, get one free on a variety of products, including the Suprema My Pillows, the Giza Dream Sheets, the My Pillow Towels, the Roll and Go Anywhere Pillows, the Duvet Covers, the Giza Pillow Cases, the Bolster Pillows, the Neck Pillows. Plus, if you buy Mike Lindell's book, What Are the Odds? From Crack Addict to CEO, you're going to get free shipping and a $25 gift card. Just go to MyPillow.com, enter promo code Larry, or call 800-890-1843. Be sure and use promo code Larry. As to your question, is it true that more blacks were killed, I think you said, in a six-month period of time. They were killed. They were lynched by the KKK. Uh, I've heard it said this way, and it, I believe it was Bob Woodson of uh, the Woodson Neighborhood Foundation who uh, made this claim. And he said something to the effect of, don't quote me exactly on the words, but uh, blacks kill more blacks in six months than the Klan killed in its history. Something to that effect. Well, if you look at, uh, let's take last year. Of the roughly 15,000 homicides, uh, half of the homicide victims are black. Now, a lot of these homicides are unsolved, as you know. Chicago, 75% of them. But uh, assuming the stats hold, and that is, generally speaking, around 94% of, of black homicides are killed by other black people, uh, the number is around 85% of white homicides are killed by other white people. So assuming those numbers hold, you're looking at around 7,000 or so uh, black homicides last year. And near as I can figure out, in the history of the Klan, they might, might have lynched around 3,000 uh, people. But uh, these numbers are not uh, hard and fast. No one really keeps really good numbers on this kind of thing. So it's speculative. But it seems to me it is not an unreasonable thing to say. Uh, but uh, it, it is in some dispute. I have seen it fact-checked. And the fact-checked people are like, oh, no, it's hard to say. Hard to say how many people were, were lynched. Not everybody lynched was killed, was lynched by the Klan. Uh, hard to say when it started, uh, you know, not good records were kept, so forth and so forth and so forth. So, but it seems to me it's not an unreasonable kind of thing to say, but uh, you are, you're going to be challenged on it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243 is the number. Um, a couple more things I want to talk about before I get to some of the chaos. Just in hand at this. New report documents 4,000 lynchings in Jim Crow South. Uh, new report uh, says uh, Equal Justice Initiative, a nonprofit. This is 2015. I estimate there were 3,959 lynchings in the South uh, from the end of the Reconstruction era. That's 1877 to 1950. So, again, assuming uh, what I said is true, that um, half of the homicide victims in this country are black, and most of those homicide victims are killed by other black men, then the number is not unreasonable. Now, a couple things. I saw a article someone sent me, and the headline, and I'm going to get to what's going on in Atlanta. The Atlanta mayor uh, is now getting fed up, and the uh, Georgia governor has now uh, ordered the National Guard to go in. We're going to be talking about that. Also, the former NYPD commissioner has been ripping the mayor of New York, de Blasio, for his anti-crime initiatives. He disbanded some 600 anti-crime units. Uh, is taking a great deal of money away from the police department, even as homicides are going up. We'll be talking about that in just a second. But so I get this piece called Black Lives Matter Goes Full Anti-Jew. Now racism is part of the terrorist organization's manifesto. Now, I knew that the Black Lives Matter manifesto had uh, suggested that uh, Israel was engaging in apartheid and that sort of thing, but that kind of part of it is ignored by the mainstream media. And the piece talks about some of the things that have been going on, about the violence going on in the streets in the names of Black Lives Matter, uh, about the... Uh, uh, looting being done in the names of Black Lives Matter. Uh, and then it quotes the official Twitter account of Black Lives Matter, which said, quote, as Israel moves forward with the annexation of the West Bank and mainstream British politics is gagged of the right to, to, to critique Zionism and Israel's settler colonial pursuits, we loudly and clearly stand behind our Palestinian comrades, comrades, end of quote. Um, and then it talks about a protest led by a Harvard student uh, and uh, making all sorts of anti-Semitic uh, uh, chants, protesters making anti-Semitic chants uh, in this march that's led by this student. Okay, so it's just basically talking about the Black Lives Matter and its anti-Semitism or, or what, they, what this guy perceives to be its anti-Semitism. Not at all an unreasonable position to take. 
So I read the piece. It also mentions the Republican Jewish Coalition. I know something about them. And they called on Joe Biden to condemn the anti-Semitism chanted by the protesters, and Biden said nothing. That's what the article says. And the Republican Jewish Coalition in this article uh, issued the following statement. We are horrified by the vicious hate-mongering by Black Lives Matter protesters. The Black Lives Matter charter is filled with anti-Israel and anti-Semitic lies. It is deeply disturbing, but not surprising to hear those sentiments chanted in the streets of Washington, D.C., end of quote. Okay? So, that's what the article said. This, this, this guy wrote. His name is uh, Lance D. Johnson. Never heard of him. And his uh, blog or website is called intolerance.news. Again, never heard of it. But I looked at it to make sure it wasn't a uh, whack job, and it didn't appear to be a whack job. So, I tried to post this piece. I'm just reading you excerpts from. And my Twitter account says, won't take it right now. Retry. So, I thought maybe something was wrong, and something was haywire with my Wi-Fi. I don't know. So, I tried it again. Same thing. Retry. We'll put it in draft. Retry later on. So then I said, okay, let me post it on Facebook. Now, they're owned by two different companies. Facebook and Inst- Instagram are owned by the same company. So frequently, I have difficulty with both of them. But these are two different companies, right? So I tried to post it. It wouldn't take it either. But then it gave me a reason. It said it violates our terms of decency. It's intolerant. Intolerant to post an article that says Black Lives Matter goes full anti-Jew. Now racism is part of the terrorist organization's manifesto. These are facts. Either it's in the, man- either it's in the organization's statement of, of, statement of principles. Now calling it a manifesto is, is maybe uh, a subjective. But it is a fact that it made the statements it made about Israel. And about being an apartheid state. These are facts. And you can't Post this on Twitter. You can't post it on Facebook. At least Facebook told me why. Twitter didn't even tell me why. Just, I'm sorry, just not putting it up. Wow. This is what we're up against. Hollywood, media, academia, and big tech. Big social media. I'm Larry Elder. Don't leave town. Larry Elder. All true. All devastating. Trending now on the Mike Gallagher Show. Changing Columbus Day to Juneteenth is the, the craziest thing I've ever heard. And where does it stop? I mean, they're tearing down statues, changing names of schools and, and uh, you know, military bases. Where does it stop? It's a reasonable question. You're allowed to ask it, I think. At least you used to be. This used to be America where we could have conversations. We could have exchanges. We could have disagreement and not expect to be dragged by the mob, attacked. Saw some video last night. Some woman had some dispute with neighbors over a stone patio being built in their yard. They recorded her. She happened to be white. They happened to be black. It got turned into a racial thing. And before you know it, she had hundreds of protesters in front of her door protesting her racism because she's a it seemed to me like she's a nosy neighbor that didn't think the other neighbors were allowed to build a stone patio where they built them. But immediately she was declared a racist. Over at PragerU, my friend Dennis Prager has a pretty re- remarkable site, PragerU. The New York Times evidently is now setting its sights on Mount Rushmore. We knew this was coming. I'm not kidding you. If I announce to you breaking news a discussion underway to tear down the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. You know you wouldn't be surprised, right? You wouldn't be surprised. Again, I, here was the, the exchange I had with a dear friend who doesn't agree with me on a lot of stuff or, or, or political stuff. What's Christopher Columbus got to do with George Floyd's death? <laughs> Don't you know what a bad guy he was? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on the Dennis Prager Show. I read, uh, and I have it in my files, oh, months ago, that doctors themselves were buying up, the word used was hoarding, hydroxychloroquine. Are you familiar with that in any way? 
Oh, of course, yeah, of course. The same thing happened when uh, when when we were told that uh, that influenza was going to you know take over the world, and and people were buying influenza drugs. Um, and this was a few years back, and so of course it's happening. I know doctors that are personally taking hydroxychloroquine in preventative doses, especially those that are working in the hospitals and they're constantly coming in contact with COVID-19. But you can't say that if the doctor speaks out and says that, you're called, you're called crazy. You're called like I am. I'm a quack. I'm not a real doctor. My license should be taken away. And my, not only me, my family, my wife is attacked, uh, et cetera. Now we're coming up to how do we get the kids back in school? Oh, I don't know. Let's make a big political deal about this. Kids are at such low risk. A child has a 50 times higher risk of drowning than they do of dying from COVID-19. A child has a greater risk of dying in a car crash going to school than they do of COVID-19. But we're going to go through all these machinations. We're going to require kids to wear face coverings, which I think is tantamount to, to abuse, if you will. Um, and 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 this is all being driven by union power and politics, not by health care, science, and the truth, unfortunately. Well, by scared teachers. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on America First with Sebastian Gorka. GIs were coming back from Vietnam. And being shouted at, called baby killers, being spat. Now back to the sage, Larry Elder. I recently watched the documentary called Uncle Tom by Larry Elder. And this is going to be just a review on my thoughts on the whole documentary. And um, to, straight into the point, it was awesome. I love the Uncle Tom documentary. Um, I recommend it to anybody who wants to, get in, wants to get into politics, who want to know more about black conservatives. And I, I think it's a, it's a good vi- a video that highlights the struggles in the the trials that a lot of black conservatives or non-democrats go through hey larry i was just reading about uncle tom congratulations hey larry we need more of the african-american vote to get trump elected be great if you could take your uh show on the road to these swing states these inner cities where you have a lot of african-americans that uh, don't know everything about what trump and the republican party has done so Larry, it would be great if you can take this show to Michigan and Wisconsin and Minnesota and promote uh, Uncle Tom, because we certainly need you, Larry. We've got to get Trump over the finish line, and we need 20% of the African-American vote. Can you help him, Larry? 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243, Larry Elder, ReliefFactor.com studio. Next hour, we will be speaking with Kurt Schlick- Schlick- Schlichter. Got a new book called 21, The 21 Lies. 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump. The caller asked whether it was true that over a, uh, like he said, six-month period of time, more, uh, let me just play that again. Yes. Somebody was telling me this last weekend that there are more young black people killed every month by other blacks than were uh, lynched in the entire Jim Crow era. I um, I don't want to repeat that if it ain't true. I find it interesting. It doesn't take away any horrors from Jim Crow and all the bad things that was going there. It doesn't take anything away from that. But it is kind of interesting when you think about how things is going on now. I'd like to know if you could confirm that or tell me the guy was full of crap. Thank you. Okay, now. Here's what U.S. News and World Today uh, said in 2016. Quote, black people have consistently accounted for close to half of the country's homicide victims, making up more than 50 percent of the broader pool of those killed overall every year since 2010. Okay, so over 50 percent of homicide victims. This is from Time magazine, February 2015. 
New report documents 4,000 lynchings in Jim Crow South. 3,959 lynchings in the South from the end of the Reconstruction era in 1977 to 1950. Okay? Homicide by numbers of murders, 2018. There were a total of 16,000 reported murder and non-negligent manslaughter cases in the United States in 2018. So, if blacks account for half, as was said by U.S. News and World Report, also was said by FBI, that's around seven to 8,000. New report documents 4,000 lynchings in one year, 8,000 black homicide victims in 2018. Damn, so, damn, so damn. Is the man full of it who said that? No, he's not. Might make a lot of people feel uncomfortable, but no, he's not. Now, one other thing before we get back to this, the Atlanta mayor and what a black Florida sheriff said about the media and about Black Lives Matter. We'll get that in just a second. There is a senator from Georgia named Kelly Loeffler. She's co-owner of a WNBA team called the Atlanta Dream. Now, they were going to put Black Lives Matter on the uniform. So she wrote a letter to the league and said, wait, 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 wait. Why don't we just put an American flag on the jerseys rather than start a Black Lives Matter and say her name kind of thing, which is what the WNBA was going to do. She wrote that promoting a, quote, particular political agenda undermines the potential of the sport and sends a message of exclusion. We need less, not more politics in sports. End of quote. Well, the commissioner released a statement saying that this co-owner is no longer involved in the day-to-day operations of the team. She's not been removed as an owner, but she's been criticized in a statement put out by the league. The WNBA is based upon a principle of equal and fair treatment of all people And we, along with the teams and the players, will continue to use our platforms to advocate for social justice. So by recommending that the flag be on the uniform, that's not social justice. Wow. Now here is what Kent from Arkansas said about Relief Factor. I have been taking Relief Factor for about three months, and I'm amazed at how much my pain has decreased. In rainy weather, I would be in ridiculous pain, waiting to crawl in bed and cry. At this, as of this writing, it's been raining all day, and I feel just fine. Before Relief Factor, I never had a day when something didn't hurt. Now, most days, I have great quality of life. I consistently take three packets a day, and I do not mind the extra expense. It is far better than the pain. Thank you, Relief Factor. What about you? Think of the three-week quick start as a trial pack. It's only $19.95. It can be at your door in just two to three days. Over 70% of the people who ordered the three-week quick start go on to order more. ReliefFactor.com. ReliefFactor.com. 800-583-84. This is Owen Strand for TownHall.com. It was heartwarming to see many of the planet's toughest and best athletes telling their children on social media how much they love them. In short videos, fathers played games with their kids, bear hugged them, and told them jokes, all in a tribute to dads on Father's Day. In a society that does little to encourage fathers, the NBA's efforts did not go unnoticed. Families are the essential building block of society, and fathers are the essential building block of the family. A home led by a father, especially a father with a spiritual focus and strong character, places flourishing within reach. Gender-neutral children do not need gender-neutral parents. Boys and girls need fathers and mothers bound by lifelong commitment. This isn't a prejudicial belief. Downplaying fatherhood sets us all up for disaster. Social media support is great, but we need more. We need a society that celebrates, honors, and ennobles fathers. I'm Owen Strand. Alliance defending freedom, fighting for those whose liberty is being violated. Trending now on America First with Sebastian Gorka. 
It's not just about money, money, money. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs as well. And we're going to discuss the latest news with our new regular guest, Trish Reagan. Let's play the video from just a few hours ago from the President of the United States. Eric, play video. In June, we added 2.1 million leisure and hospitality jobs, 740,000 retail jobs, 568,000 education and healthcare jobs, 357,000 service jobs. These are all historic numbers. And 356,000 manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing looks like it's ready to really take off at a level that it's never been before. And a lot of that has to do with our trade policy because we're bringing manufacturing back to our country. Trish, uh, did anybody expect the results we got today? Talk to us about what we have heard just a few moments ago from the president. You know, I. Listen, I, I was glad to see him out there. He he needed to do that victory lap because people need a little good news right now, right, Seb? Um, yes. I mean, there were almost 5 million jobs that were added. This is really incredible. And you know what it tells you? The recovery is underway. We are going to emerge from this intact. It's almost like, you know, you think about the Europeans, they like go away for the summer, they shut down for three <laughs> months, and then miraculously their economy just boom, picks up right where it started. I mean, we're not right where we started, but we're we're getting there. And, and I could not be happier to see this news. Uh, again, I was surprised that it was as big as it was. We got the ADP, ADP report just yesterday, which indicated it was going to be good, but this good? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on The Mike Gallagher Show. Share excerpts of today's show from Larry Elder's YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash the Larry Elder Show radio and click on the subscribe button. What I love about this interview is that like a lot of these thoughts that a lot of these predominantly black conservatives talk about in the documentary i do feel like a lot of black people feel that way naturally it's just that over time um we get corrupted by the media by propaganda by what um society tells us is true and, and what's not true and we had a lot of black conservatives on there we had candace owens brandon tatum we had larry elder of course we had uh jesse uh, lee peterson a uh, little thomas soul was sprinkled throughout there too uh, we had this another, um, she was a, was she a governor or mayor? I forgot her name, but she was interviewed by uh, PragerU as well. I forgot her name, but. 717243, Larry Elder, ReliefFactor.com studio. I think he's talking about Carol Swain, who's in the movie. He, she ran for mayor of Nashville, former law professor at Vanderbilt. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243. We post excerpts from the show every day on our new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Larry Elder Show Radio. Please head over there and click the subscribe button. That way you'll always be notified every time we post something. We're only going to post the highlights of the show. Of course, the show is nothing but highlights. So imagine Mr. Christian's job every day trying to figure out the highlights of the show. Oh my goodness, what am I going to, what am I going to leave out? I can't. Also, be sure and follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Let me get back to uh, this co-owner of this WNBA team. So the, the uh, league wants to put uh, Black Lives Matter uh, messages and say her name, referring to the Breonna Taylor uh, death in Louisville. That's the woman who was in her, in her bed, and uh, Marshall showed up and assumed that she was a... Uh, was the the person they wanted a warrant on, had a warrant on, and turned out to be the wrong address, and she was just blown away. So, say my name is referring to her, and um, Black Lives Matter, of course, referring to the organization. So this co-owner says, I, 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 don't, I don't think so. She, so she wrote a letter and suggested that we put the American flag on the, uh, on the jersey, rather than the Black Lives Matter say your name thing. And she wrote that doing so would, quote, promote a particular political agenda that would undermine the potential of the sport and send a message of exclusion. We need less, not more politics in sports, end of quote. Well, the Players Association is calling for the commissioner to remove her as co-owner.
The WBA, the WNBA is based upon a principle of equal and fair treatment of all people. And we, along with the teams and players, will continue to use our platforms to vigorously advocate for social justice. Really? This was a um, commissioner statement that said that. Now, one of the players has spoken out publicly against her. And this player, her name is Renee Montgomery, opted out of the 2020 season in order to focus on social justice. So she tweeted that her letter was an example of why she chose to sit out and not play. And she's demanding a conversation with the uh, co-owner. So one of, her, one of her players said, this is exactly why I decided not to play. Because of stuff like this. Because we got a co-owner who thinks that putting the American flag on our uniforms is, is, a, is a good thing. And, 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 and when, when we want to put Black Lives Matter in... Uh, this is where we are. You can't even disagree respectfully. She didn't denounce the organization. She didn't call the organization Marxist, which it seems to me it is. You look at his principles. Community ownership of property. What is that but Marxism? And the statements it makes about Israel. What is that but anti-Semitism? But that's okay. That's social justice. But the American flag, the American flag is divisive. The American flag is hate speech. This is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now, the White House press secretary was asked again and again and again about Trump's position on the Confederate flag. Does Trump agree with NASCAR and removing the Confederate flag? And and at the end of it, she reminded them that she didn't get a single question on the, deaths, on the deaths of these young people that we're seeing in the streets as a result of the response to the deaths of George Floyd and the deaths of Rashard Brooks. Finally, I'd end with this. You know, I was asked probably 12 questions about the Confederate flag. Uh, this president's focused on action, and I'm a little dismayed that I didn't receive one question on the deaths that we got in this country this weekend. I didn't receive one question about New York City shootings doubling for the third straight week, and over the last seven days, shootings skyrocket by 142 percent. Not one question. I didn't receive one question about five children who were killed, and I'll leave you with this remark by a dad. It broke my heart. A dad of an eight-year-old lost in Atlanta this this weekend, they say Black Lives Matters. You killed a child. She didn't do nothing to nobody. Was his quote. We need to be focused on securing our streets, making sure no lives are lost because all Black Lives Matter. That of David Dorn and that of this eight-year-old girl. Thank you. Mic drop. Now the father of a teen killed at Chaz, now called Chop. Says he still hasn't heard from the mayor, but guess who called him? I still ain't heard from the mayor. Incredibly, Donald Trump called me. The president of the United States called me today and talked to me today. What did he say? He gave his condolences. And me, I'm not a political guy, so I'm not. I'm, but I told him, you know, I didn't know nobody like you. You know, just, I just, you know, I'm real. I said, nobody like you, but on this camera, I tell you right now. Donald Trump called me and he didn't have to call me. He didn't have to do nothing. I, hey, I keep it real. I don't nobody like you, uh, but he called me. It would be kind of interesting to know why this man felt that nobody liked him. What he would have said to Trump had Trump asked him why. We come back. A Baltimore councilman tweets about the removal of a police memorial, a memorial that was built by victims, by families, not by the police union. And a Florida black sheriff is ripping the media and Black Lives Matter, saying my job is to protect all lives. Uh Uh-oh, must be an Uncle Tom. Now, these are uncertain times we're all trying to navigate. And I've been talking about my buddies at Rush Tax Resolution for years. 
And if you still haven't called them, I'm telling you, now is the time. To help people during this pandemic, the IRS just announced what they've called their People First Initiative. So if you're struggling with unresolved tax issues, there will never be a better time to put an end to them. Right now, the IRS is mandating to offer as much relief to taxpayers as possible, but the clock is ticking. Program ends July 15. You are crazy to try and deal with the IRS on your own. Under the new initiative, the pros at Rush Tax have been able to negotiate harder than ever with the IRS, and they're seeing some of their most incredible resolutions ever. With their unbelievable zero BBB complaint history, Rush Tax is the only one I trust and recommend. Call right now, 800-485-3021, or Rush taxresolution.com that's rush taxresolution.com larry will be right back stay tuned trending now on the dennis prager show if americans don't embrace some basic moral principles as their culture the country is over because this country is not homogeneous like denmark or norway country is heterogeneous ethnically and racially and in every other way the human condition comes so it is the only way america can survive is if everybody assumes a strong american identity which the left is destroying needless to say And as a result, you don't have America anymore. From many, we. Isn't that amazing? That was the name, I think, of his column. Certainly, that was the the topic of his column. Wow. I saw it early. uh, I want you to know it brings me zero satisfaction when they say, so I'm not... I'm not bragging to you. I saw it early. I'm only saying that I did see it early because I think clearly. And I have a strong moral Geiger counter. And whenever it comes near the left, it uh, pulsates. People want to say, oh, look, you know, I don't like either extreme. This is, this is the lazy way of not confronting evil. Well, it's on both sides. Really? When was the last violent demonstration on the right? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Obama tore this country down. No one stood up to him. Nobody, because he was black. You need to wake up. All across America, the Larry Elder Show. Hey, Larry, good afternoon. Good job, my friend. Always enjoy the show. Just wanted to comment on these geniuses that would tear down a statue of Frederick Douglass. What idiots, and if they were right about what they were doing, what is that statue even doing there anyhow? How would a white racist country allow to even be there to begin with? Hey, Larry, this is Al in Riverside. I just heard uh, CNN uh, talking about Donald Trump and this issue over statues and history. They say he's trying to pit Americans against each other. Now, what gives them the right to say that? That reminds me of of Walter Cronkite saying about Vietnam, we ought to admit we did the best we could, and now we ought to pull out of the fight. That's not news. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243, Larry Elder, ReliefFactor.com studio. Next hour, we will be talking with Kurt Schlichter. Got a new book called The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and About You. And about the Confederate flag, the press secretary was pressed and pressed and pressed about that because, after all, they want Donald Trump to say something inflammatory. They can then accuse him of being racist. Mario, go ahead. Kaylee, on the Confederate part, why would the president not praise NASCAR for removing the Confederate flag, particularly given uh, the history of that flag, the symbol that it has for African Americans, and also what it represents in terms of... So now this is the big issue, the Confederate flag. 13 Baltimore high schools where 0% can do math at grade level. 
Five or six where only 1% can. That's 50% of the public high schools in Baltimore where either 0% or 1% of the kids can do math at grade level. And let's talk about the Confederate flag. Do you think they even know enough about history to even know who Stonewall Jackson even was? The, the treasonous acts and the insurrection against the Republic. So Why the, would he not praise them for taking that down, even if it's a rating to The him? president um, takes great offense when Americans are knee-jerk reaction summed up as racist. And in aggregate, the picture being painted uh, here in this instant incident uh, seemed to be that there was that suggestion there when, in fact, uh, what we're seeing across the nation is this vast cancel culture where we're going to tear down our monuments, uh, we're going to tear down Gandhi, we're going to tear down um, George Washington. We're going to tear down Lincoln. Um, it's really quite appalling what we've seen happen across the country. And um, the president wants no part in cancel culture. He wants no part uh, in the tearing down and defacing of Matthias Baldwin, an abolitionist, uh, Philadelphia Civil War soldiers, uh, John Greenleaf Whittier, vandalized an abolitionist. He wants no part in this. I mean, he stands against the demonization of Americans, and he stands firmly on, on the side of preserving our history. Yes. He is not, I, I said from the very top of this briefing, he is not uh, m given an opinion one way or the other on that. I just spoke to him this morning. And they wouldn't give it up and ask over and over and over again, not one question about the deaths of these young people in Baltimore, in Atlanta, not one question about the fact that you've got schools in Baltimore where 0% of kids can do math at grade level. Do you think they even know enough about history to cancel it? I'm Larry Elder. This is Owen Strand for townhall.com. It was heartwarming to see many of the planet's toughest and best athletes telling their children on social media how much they love them. In short videos, fathers played games with their kids, bear hugged them, and told them jokes, all in a tribute to dads on Father's Day. In a society that does little to encourage fathers, the NBA's efforts did not go unnoticed. Families are the essential building block of society, and fathers are the essential building block of the family. A home led by a father, especially a father with a spiritual focus and strong character, places flourishing within reach. Gender-neutral children do not need gender-neutral parents. Boys and girls need fathers and mothers bound by lifelong commitment. This isn't a prejudicial belief. Downplaying fatherhood sets us all up for disaster. Social media support is great, but we need more. We need a society that celebrates, honors, and ennobles fathers. I'm Owen Strand. Alliance Defending Freedom, fighting for those whose liberty is being violated. Trending now on America First with Sebastian Gorka. It's not just about money, money, money. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs as well. And we're going to discuss the latest news with our new regular guest, Trish Reagan. Let's play the video from just a few hours ago from the President of the United States. Eric, play video. In June, we added 2.1 million leisure and hospitality jobs. 740,000 retail jobs, 568,000 education and healthcare jobs, 357,000 service jobs. These are all historic numbers. And 356,000 manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing looks like it's ready to really take off at a level that it's never been before. And a lot of that has to do with our trade policy because we're bringing manufacturing back to our country. Trish, uh, did anybody expect the results we got today? Talk to us about what we have heard just a few moments ago from the president. You know, I, listen, I, I was glad to see him out there. He he needed to do that victory lap because people need a little good news right now, right, Seb? Um, yes. I mean, you know, almost 5 million jobs that were added. This is really incredible. And you know what it tells you? The recovery is underway. We are going to emerge from this intact it's almost like you know you think about the europeans they like go away for the summer they shut down for three months and then miraculously their economy just boom picks up right where it started i mean we're not right where we started but we're we're getting there and and i could not be happier to see this news uh again i was surprised that it was as big as it was we got the ADP, adp report just yesterday which indicated it was going to be good but this good up with what's trending subscribe on youtube today trending now on the mike gallagher show the new york
York Times is reporting how Mount Rushmore was built on land that belonged to the Lakota tribe and sculpted by a man who had strong bonds with the Ku Klux Klan. It features the faces of two U.S. presidents who were slaveholders. That's an actual tweet from the New York Times. Now, Prager U points out <laughs> that the same New York Times, which has a storied history, its founding editor was a guy named Henry Jarvis Raymond. In 1851, the New York Times founding editor published an editorial in which he supported a slave owner's a slave owner's legal right to recover his escaped slaves. So Prager, you had an interesting question to the New York Times. Will you guys also be canceling yourselves since you want everything canceled? How far does this go? Chris, you're well, you're first up on the Mike Gallagher show. How are you, Chris? Good. I thought it was ironic that October 12th this year falls on a Monday. And, of course, October 12th was the day that historically Christopher Columbus discovered America, which is the original Christopher Columbus, the, re- the real reason why it's a holiday. I, I, I so, honestly, I, I mean, really, Chris, you got to help me here. You got to tell me what Christopher Columbus has to do with the racial dialogue that has 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 emerged after the killing of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis. Please connect it for me. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on The Dennis Prager Show. If Americans don't embrace some basic moral principles as their culture, the country is over because this country is not homogeneous like Denmark or Norway. The country is heterogeneous ethnically and racially, and in every other way the human condition comes. So it is the only way America can survive is if everybody assumes a strong American identity, which the left is destroying, needless to say. And as a result, you don't have America anymore. From many, we. Isn't that amazing? That was the name, I think, of his column. Certainly, that was the the topic of his column. Wow. I saw it early. uh, I want you to know it brings me zero satisfaction with me. So I'm not... I'm not bragging to you. I saw it early. I'm only saying that I did see it early because I think clearly. And I have a strong moral Geiger counter. And whenever it comes near the left, it uh, pulsates. People want to say, oh, look, you know, I don't like either extreme. This is, this is the lazy way of not confronting evil. Well, it's on both sides. Really? When was the last violent demonstration on the right? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Obama tore this country down. No one stood up to him. Nobody, because he was black. You need to wake up. My parents didn't teach me that I was a victim. They can turn back voting rights. Didn't nobody donate to us the right to vote? You should house, nigga. I didn't call you a nigga. Oh, okay. That's that's a big difference. Right. You're Uncle Tom. And Uncle Tom is somebody who has sold out by embracing the white man. Uncle Tom. Bedwench. Boot liquor. Black white supremacist. Chucking and jiving. House Negro. Coon. Uncle Tom. Coon. Coon. I have a coon award over there. 
Coon of the Year Award. Most black people don't believe that other blacks can be independent, free thinkers. I believe the legacy and the ancestry of black Americans is being insulted every single day. I will not pretend to be a victim in this country. I know that that makes many people on the left uncomfortable. Racist. Racist. Racial. Racist. Racism. A thousand cuts of racism. The liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. I never felt that because I was black or I was poor or a woman that I couldn't do Triple eight nine seven one S A G E triple eight nine seven one seven two four three Larry Elder Relief Factor dot com studio. In a few minutes, we will be speaking with author Kurt Schlichter. He's got a new book called "The Twenty One Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You." More on this in due course. Also, the White House press secretary was asked repeatedly about Donald Trump's position on the Confederate flag. Lord knows. That's one of the most earth-shattering issues going on right now, how Donald Trump feels about the Confederate flag. A flag that flew during the eight years that Obama was president. For some reason, we didn't have the cancel culture then. You tell me why. Former NYPD commissioner not terribly impressed with the anti-police tactics of the mayor of New York who's disbanded some 600 anti-crime units. Surprisingly, crime in New York has gone up. Even the Atlanta mayor has now gotten fed up. And the governor of Georgia has called out the National Guard. All of that and more, 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243. Nearly 80 people shot in Chicago, 15 of them killed. That's the final tally for the 4th of July weekend. News. If you're just joining us and waking up with us this morning, at least 14 people are wounded in two separate mass shootings overnight. Among the victims, a child and two teenagers. One of them is dead now. CBS 2's V. Wynn is live at Comer Children's Hospital where those young victims had been taken. V. Suzanne, good morning. Those three boys were among eight people shot in Inglewood. A 14-year-old boy was shot in the back. He was taken here to Comer Children's Hospital, where he later died. Two Mr. Trump, how do you feel about the Confederate statues? <laughs> they were Other boys, an 11-year-old and a 15-year-old, are still recovering this morning in fair condition. Mr. Trump, is Mr. Trump going to wear a face mask? Now, officers were really? called last night around 1130 to 61st and Carpenter for multiple people shot. Police believe there was a large gathering in the street. Does Mr. Trump think it was a good thing that the South lost the war? That's an actual question that was asked. I'm not making that up. When four men walked up and started shooting, in total, eight people, three boys and five men were wounded. They were all taken to different hospitals to be treated. But at this hour, four of those victims have since died, including the 14-year-old boy and three men who have not been identified yet. It's a hard task to bring and add to the total of, of children that have been uh, struck down. And now we add another uh, child to that list. Uh, Okay, that's, uh, that's Chicago. Here's the Atlanta mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Well, now we're demanding action for Sequoia Turner and for all of the other people who were shot in Atlanta last night and over the past few weeks because the reality is this. These aren't police officers shooting people on the streets of Atlanta. These are members of the community shooting each other. And in this case, it is the worst possible outcome. And there were two other people who were actually shot and killed last night and several others. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm trying to figure out how we pin this on Trump. We have talked about this movement that's happening across America in this moment in time where we have the ears and the interests of people across this country and across this globe who are saying they want to see change. But the difference in this moment in time with the civil rights movement, the civil rights movement, there was a defined common enemy. 
So we're fighting the enemy within when we are shooting each other up on our streets in this city and you shot and killed a baby. And it wasn't one shooter, there were at least two shooters. An eight-year-old baby. If you want people to take us seriously and you want you don't want us to lose this movement, then we can't lose each other. The father of the little girl in Atlanta who was shot and killed. They say Black Lives Matter. You killed your own. You killed your own this time. Is that because of burial? They killed my baby because she crossed the barrier and made a U-turn. You killed a child. She ain't do nothing to nobody. They can't give us time to make a U-turn. They started shooting up my car before we could even make a U-turn. Shooting my ties out like, why? But Black Lives Matter. was shot in her bed. Killing your own. Nobody got to help. You killed an eight-year-old child. Nobody. She ain't did nothing to now one of y'all. She just wanted to get home to see her cousin. That's all she wanted to do. She just wanted to get home. And a Florida sheriff, happened to be black, had this to say about the media and about Black Lives Matter. I was letting it be known. We, we were faced here in Clay County with an individual who thought this was going to be the county where he could uh, bring outside folks. He reached, actually reached out to organizations like BLM and Dream Defenders and thought that this would be the location to have such an event. Well, you know, I draw a hard line when it comes to a place where I lay my head. This is my home. The folks of Clay County are my friends and my constituents. These are the folks that I love and care for, and I will be jumped if I don't do all I can as the sheriff to protect these people. Uh, Members of the squad have introduced a bill to defund the police in the House. A grandfather of an 11-year-old killed by gun violence doesn't think that defunding the police is the way to go. We can't take money from the police department. We need the police. You take the police from there and we wind up having less police officers in the street, less detectives. It's not going to work. The crime is going to get worse. Uh, you need police to run those calls. So you start having less police officers. Who are going to come when there is a need for police services? But what I will say, we have to find money for the additional services that everybody would like to have. They're all call, calls that come into the police department that should not go to the police. Meanwhile, in Baltimore, that has a per capita homicide rate three times worse than Chicago. Three times. Chicago gets the black eye because it's a big city and has a big absolute number of homicides. But in terms of homicides per capita, Baltimore is three times more dangerous than Chicago. And this is a city, as I mentioned, that's got 13 high schools where 0% of the kids can do math at grade level and five or six where 1% can. So what does a Baltimore city councilman do with his time? Sends out a tweet suggesting that the memorial commemorating officers who've died in the line of duty be taken down. And in response, the Fraternal Order of Police said, I want to separate fact from fiction. The memorial that this sitting council person is referencing to is one dedicated to fallen officers. Members of the FOP take it upon themselves to keep the area clean, but it was the victims' families who raised money in their honor to have a place in the city where they could remember their loved one who was killed in the line of duty. It is not an FOP memorial. As the debate over the statues continues, a tweet by one of Baltimore's elected leaders is causing some serious controversy. At the center of it all is a memorial to honor the men and women who served on the Baltimore Police Department, some who were killed in the line of duty. Alexa Ashwell has the concern. Here in Baltimore is a police memorial to honor the fallen. A recent tweet by a councilman suggests it should be removed. In downtown Baltimore, near Baltimore Police Headquarters, is a memorial to honor the fallen, those who took an oath to protect and serve the streets of Baltimore and who made the ultimate sacrifice. People go to remember their love and where people go to respect those who have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice 
for the city of Baltimore. Which is why former police spokesperson T.J. Smith says he was so appalled when he saw this tweet by Baltimore City Councilman Ryan Dorsey. It was in response to this tweet by a police scanner account. Cop says protesters are passing by FOP Memorial, continuing down President towards Harbor East. Dorsey replies, how is it with all the attention given to the Columbus monuments and as consistently awful as the FOP is, how is the FOP Memorial not on the list of monuments to remove? Trending now on America First with Sebastian Burka. The Democrats are trying to erase history. There's a good reason for that, Well, yeah, look, the Democrats are the party of racism. Uh, The KKK was founded by the Democrat Party. Uh, The Democrat Party uh, worked over time to try to keep in place Jim Crow after they tried to keep in place slavery, after they tried to uh, uh, stop the uh, progress of the civil rights movement. The actual civil rights movement from the uh, the, the the twentieth century, uh, the uh, the Democrat Party is history is littered with leader all the uh, so I know we talked about this last time. Uh, um, the four speakers whose portraits uh, that Nancy Pelosi was taking down, they were all Democrats. All those Confederates. Yeah, all so four the Democrat speakers Party, were Democrats. The Democrat Party has a history of racism, of bigotry, uh, uh, of, again, creating the Ku Klux Klan, of, uh, it was created by Democrats, uh, of uh, pushing uh, to try to keep in place Jim Crow uh, before and that. And fighting the Civil Rights Act. And fighting, fighting it. it. Right, the Democrat Party uh, is is littered with bad history. It's a Republican Party that was the champion of women's and civil rights. And uh, it's important to note that, look, Abraham Lincoln was the first Republican president, right? Like, Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves, the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, held the Union together during the Civil War, was a Republican. He was the first Republican. And it's worth noting that the Democrats, I think that as they're doing all this chaos and trying to tear down statues and history and so on and so forth, and rewrite history they're trying to uh erase their own history right. and and they don't want I, I mean god forbid the public found out that the uh the democrat party caused the kkk keep up with what's trending subscribe on youtube today trending now on the hugh hewitt show Uh, Joe Biden came out of the basement yesterday, sort of. This is not really a press conference. Cut number six, where he admits he's got a list of people he's going to call on. Cut number six. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. He gave me a list of how to recognize. Is Alex AP out there? And then he slams Trump for his cognitive capabilities, believe it or not. Cut number eight. One of two things. This president is... um, talks about cognitive capability. He doesn't seem to be cognitively aware of what's going on. He either reads and or gets briefed on important issues and he forgets it, or he doesn't think it's necessary that he need to know it. But the fact is that at a minimum, at a minimum, the discrepancy allegedly between within the the intelligence community as reported Some thought it was more certain and others thought it was less certain. That should be resolved. The president should have on day one said, I want you to come before me in the the situation room and lay out the differences. The prospect of this guy as president. I know you have an aesthetic. Some of you have an aesthetic objection to Donald Trump that he's mean, uh, that he, he picks fights, he personalizes everything. But honest to goodness, slow Joe Biden. You really, you're going to trust this country in the middle of an a, a existential battle with the Chinese Communist Party that's going to extend for 100 years, and we're going to start it with Joe Biden. No, you're going to reelect Donald Trump. Stay tuned. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today.
Call the Larry Elder Show now at 888-971-SAGE. That's 888-971-7243. Eldorados, let Larry know what's on your mind. There's a lot of black conservatives in there. And watching that, it was very encouraging because I do feel like in this current climate, black conservatives are a rarity. Or at least if they do exist, they're very low-key about it because if you were to come out and say that you're conservative or you're you don't support democrats or leftist ideology you get shamed you get beheaded for that and just watching the documentary i felt like i was part of a community that existed even though me personally there's not much black people in my inner circle who was red pill i only have like two three four friends who are actually uh think similar to the way I do so watching that I felt like man I was part of a community like I felt like man these are the kind of black people that need to be displayed more in the world instead of the ones that we have now 888-971-SAGE 888-971-7243 Larry Elder ReliefFactor.com studio former NYPD Commissioner Kelly calls the mayor's handling of the crime atrocious And Governor Ron DeSantis is defending Trump's coronavirus comments. All of that and more. 888-971-SAGE. I am Larry Elder. We are ReliefFactor.com studio. My next guest is quite the Renaissance man. He's a trial lawyer, retired Army infantry colonel, has a degree from Army War College, writes twice a week as a senior columnist to Town Hall, has been rated the top columnist for the Town Hall, has a brand new book just came out called the 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You. Please welcome to the program, Kurt Schlichter. Well, thank you for that great introduction, Larry. I have to say, though, I did go to a, uh, the Army War College. is kind of a party war college, so it's not, you know. <laughs> it, still, it still counts, my goodness. Army infantry colonel, that's pretty serious stuff. Well, you know, you hang, a long, hang around long enough to promote anybody, I guess. I mean, look at Vindman. Uh, now, Kurt, I went to uh, University of Michigan at the time. Art Schlichter was quarterback of Ohio State. Is there any relationship between you and, and, and Art? You know, I bet you probably think so. No, there, there is not, though my brother <laughs> once scored his autograph going, yeah, we pronounce our last name Schlichter. <laughs> was, and he, he signed the thing, and then he asked, uh, he said, hey, double or nothing. So it was, it was an interesting time. Well, that's right. He, pro- he pronounced it Schlichter, but it was spelled the same way as yours. It is. He, yeah, he's wrong. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting because uh, you know the first I was the first Schlichter in 250 years to live in Germany when I went back there as uh, uh, in the army uh, during the Cold War, mm-hmm. and um, uh, it's uh, <laughs> Schlichter in Germany means mediator, man who makes peace, which is which which is so very wrong. Interesting. All right, 21 <laughs> biggest lies about Donald Trump and you. First of all, tell me about the and you part. The end, you part is the most important part, and uh, I, I, I was expecting you to catch that. Remember, Donald Trump is not the target of these guys. They, they, they actually didn't care about Donald Trump. They kind of liked him, you know. He was fun. He mm-hmm. had money. Mm-hmm. He could fly on his plane. There were right. pretty girls around. They loved Donald Trump. Rappers loved Still him. They, they, they out they, rapper, 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 rappers loved, loved him because his name, Trump, rhymes with a lot of stuff. Rappers loved him. Yeah. Exactly. It was easy to, uh, you know, it was easy to uh, bust a rhyme about him. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, then they realized, wait a minute, this guy's, this guy's running for election, and he's representing these normal people, the people that, that, that we hate, that we have contempt for, that we despise. He's knuckle-dragging, Jesus-loving gun people. Mm-hmm. And Trump turns out not to respect our elite. He doesn't think much of them at all. He thinks they're kind of losers. And in fact, if you kind of look at them, you know, if you look at this generation, you know, compared to, say, the generation that uh, got out of the Depression in World War II or the generation that put a man on the moon or uh, uh, dismantled actual systemic racism in the United States, we have, a, we, we have a elite, a crew of betters whose big accomplishments are Iraq, uh, the Wall Street meltdown, and Grindr. So, 
He's not impressed by them. My guest is named Kurt Schlichter. The book is called The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump and You. Some of the lies are Donald Trump is a racist. Trump is stupid. Trump hates LGBT uh, people. Trump is Putin's pet. Trump is literally a Nazi. Trump is totally corrupt. Trump's a warmonger. Trump hates immigrants. Kurt, I interviewed a um, entertainment reporter named Liz Kroiken a, a couple years ago. She has covered Donald Trump, she said, for 10 years. She said, it was my job to find dirt on people. I'm looking for dirt on people. If I had known about any dirt on Donald Trump, I would have published it. Believe me, no one ever said anything about him being a racist. No one said anything about him being a bigot. No one said anything about him being a homophobe until he ran for president. If, if they had, I would have, I would have published it. Well, look, he, Donald Trump is probably one of the top 10 most filmed human beings of the last 25 years. You would think that if he was going to spontaneously start channeling uh, Democrat hero Robert Byrd or Democrat hero Woodrow Wilson or Democrat hero Theo Bilbo, he would, you know, it would have gotten caught on tape and somebody would have found it. I mean, it's pretty much uh, the, the holy grail of video clips is Trump sounding off about how he hates minorities. If it existed, it would be out. Donald Trump is a pawn of the NRA. Donald Trump is a bully. Donald Trump loves dictators. Donald Trump betrayed our allies. Donald Trump is tearing America apart. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I could have done a whole second book of lies. I could have done 21 more, <laughs> 21 more lies about Donald Trump, uh, you know, part two, the revenge. But, it, it, you know, I wanted to talk about these, these very popular ones, these well-known ones, and I wanted to put it into context. It's not like BuzzFeed. It's not, a, it's not just a list. There's a theory behind this. And the theory is that our elite uses deception and lies to try and demoralize us and to try and retain the power that we took back when we voted for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And, and Kurt Schlichter, you point out about uh, Donald Trump and the media. The reason the media is so angry, as you pointed out when you first came on, is because they loved him at first. They put him on, they gave him hundreds of millions of dollars in free advertising until they found out that, that this guy was picking off his rivals one after one after another one. My goodness, we helped to make this guy, we created a monster, and now they're angry at themselves and they want to take him down uh, in part because they're mad at themselves. Well, he's a traitor to their class, Larry. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he went to Wharton. He's a rich guy. He's from New York. He's supposed to think like them and feel like them and obey like them. I mean, they all do. They all march in this weird lockstep uh, uh, army ant like conformity. And Donald Trump, he's free. He does what he wants. He thinks for himself. And he says what he thinks. He... Donald Trump has the common sense of the guy sitting at the bar drinking a uh, pint of Yungling after a hard day's work where he had a job where he has to shower afterwards. And you ask this guy something like about Afghanistan and say, hey, man, do you think we ought to be in Afghanistan? And he's like, well, my name's Lou. I, uh, I don't think we <laughs> need to be there. We've been there 20 years. We can't win this war. We haven't won this war. We're not going to do what we need to. And my friend Jimmy had his son over there. Son was in the airborne, got shot in the leg. I don't think it's worth our, our boys and our money anymore. And then and you go, huh, okay. And you, you, uh, you know, graduate of, say, you know, Georgetown Foreign Service School, what do you think? Well, I think the correlation of forces and the <laughs> these multiple uh, uh, axes of diplomatic, economic, and military power require the, a scenario which I... Okay, the book is gosh, called The 21 up. Biggest okay, Lies. The book is called The 21 Biggest Lies About Donald Trump. It's by my guest, Kurt Schlichter. Kurt, thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. You got it. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243. I am Larry Elder. Do not leave town. Larry will be right back. Stay tuned. If you could do one thing that changed you forever, would you? How about something extraordinary? A bucket list item packing years of memories into 10 exciting days. Chart a new path by joining Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Set a clear new vision for yourself this year and join me on the Stand with Israel tour this December 2nd to 11th. Along with special guest Mike Lindell. God freed me from these and other addictions and started me on a path to a restored heart. Praise Jesus. Discover over 40 iconic sites as you encounter the life-changing impact of a journey to the Holy Land. Surrounded by like-minded travelers, 
picture yourself stepping foot in key locations right out of history. Much more than a vacation, this journey guides you through one of the most politically and spiritually significant places in the world. Explore Jerusalem, Galilee, the Dead Sea region, and so much more. Along the way, Dr. Sebastian Gorka will broadcast live and on-site as you watch and participate. Reserve your spot today for this incredible journey. Call today to join Dr. Sebastian Gorka on this life-enriching Israel tour, December 2nd to 11th, 2020. Call 855-565-5519 or book online at standwithisraeltour.com. Trending now on The Hugh Hewitt Show. In your opinion, did the demonstrations that were not only inevitable, but probably necessary following the murder of George Floyd, did they contribute to the resurgence of the pandemic in a significant way? I think it, as a, just a matter of intuition and common sense, I think you have to say yes. You look at the explosion in young cases. I know that there are some counterexamples, you know, in Minnesota, it wasn't from protests, it was from bars being open. But as a general sense, I think absolutely. I think the larger damage from those protests in terms of the COVID part is the absolute discrediting of the epidemiological establishment to be taken seriously. Because the second you say, you can, you, these rules are really important, will save lives, so you shouldn't do the things that you really care about. But the things that we really care about, it's a free-for-all. And so you, there's now just a large constituency on the left and right that will not listen to these people. They sold their credibility for a little sort of woke profile in, in response to a truly horrific, horrific thing. And you can't get that toothpaste back into the tube. If you said, you know, going to church or your parents' funeral, that is a selfish thing that is going to get people killed. But going out for day 11 of protests, that is an honorable and glorious thing and you should be allowed to do it. You can't have those kinds of double standards and expect to have credibility going forward. Read the Washington Post editorial this morning on this because I am I am completely convinced the pandemic is back because of these demonstrations, at least half of it. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on the Eric Metaxas Show. You know, that's that's one of the significant things in America is we look at past generations through today's filter and today's lens. And you, you really can't do that. It's interesting to me that back in Genesis nine, when you see about Noah and God chose Noah and the Bible in Genesis nine, six says that Noah was a righteous man. And then it says in his generation. We know that Noah had trouble with drunkenness and other things as well. But when you compare him to where he was in his day, he was so far ahead of everyone else. And so what's happening is we're comparing our standards of today and trying to impose them back. Larry posts new excerpts of the show on YouTube every day. Just go to youtube.com forward slash the Larry Elder Show Radio and click on the subscribe button. You know, and one of the parts that just got to me personally is when they were talking about uh, the black home, how before the 60s, you know, the culture of the black family was, was, was stable. You know, there's fathers. If you got married, you stayed with your wife. You never cheated. You raised your kids properly with discipline, taught them hard work uh, to get an education. Like just when they showed a highlight of all the black families, I was like, man, like that's the way it's supposed to be. Like for me personally, I love seeing a good nuclear uh, black family i love seeing a father taking care of his wife taking care of his, his kids like i just feel like man that's the example that a lot of uh blacks need to see because we don't have that in our inner cities we don't have that in a lot of our households and you know in an interview in the documentary they were talking a lot about you know the history of the america slavery you know the democrats and republicans how it is how how you're perceived as an uncle tom or house negro when you're conservative like they're just speaking on a lot of topics about the black family triple eight nine seven one s-a-g-e triple eight nine seven one seven two four three larry elder relief studio uncle tom.com uncle tom.com if you haven't seen it yet 
and bring a liberal friend with you. Mike Lindell is making face masks and it's giving them to hospitals all around the country. He's also offering great discounts on all of his products. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener specials and check this out. Buy one, get one free. Supima MyPillows, Giza Dream Sheets, MyPillow Towels, Roll and Go Anywhere Pillows, Duvet Colors, Giza Pillowcases, Bolster Pillows, Neck Pillows. Plus, if you buy Mike Lindell's book, What Are the Odds? from Crack Addict and CEO, you're going to get free shipping and a $25 gift card. Just go to MyPillow.com, enter promo code Larry, or call 800-890-1843. Be sure and use promo code Larry. Going to be on the Hannity Show around 6.35 p.m. Pacific time with Leo Terrell. We're going to be talking about the efforts to defund the police and the way Don Lamont last night defended Black Lives Matter uh, with his guest, Terry Crews, who was suggesting that Black Lives Matter... Uh, was not advancing the best interests of the black community. And Don Lamont felt that it was his job as a journalist to defend that organization. All of that and more. Erlene is in Minnesota. Erlene, you're on the Larry Oldis Show. Thank you so much for calling. Hi, Larry. Hi. First of all, I want to say I loved the, the documentary. It's great. I'm, I watched it, and I'm going to watch it again. Thank you. And after I watched it, I ordered the book, Uncle Tom. <laughs> I've never read it, so I'm reading it. You know, er, you know, early in, as, you, as, as you know, early, and that was one of the points that was made in the in the uh, in the movie. Most people haven't read the book; uh, otherwise, people wouldn't refer to Uncle Tom the way they do, because Uncle Tom was really a hero in the book, uh, and he was based upon a real man named Josiah Henson. And uh, when the book came out, Harriet Beecher Stowe was asked whether these characters were completely made up, and she wrote a uh, article where she talked about every single major character in her book was uh, patterned after a real life person, a real life slave, and Josiah, Josiah Henson, Uncle. Tom in the book was actually a hero, both in the book and in real life. Exactly. I mean, it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm surprised I hadn't read it before now. I bought an extra one to give to a friend. Mm-hmm. The, other, the other point I want to bring up is that there are several black um, conservatives running across the country. People don't know their names mm-hmm. or even about them. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get their names out publicized so people will recognize their names because somebody had called earlier about getting the message out to black conservatives or just people across the country well we have lots of people running but people don't know who they are so we need to get their names out there so i'm trying to figure out how to do that you know you know early early real quickly it's interesting if they were liberal we'd know their names because the naacp would put out a list of all of them but the republicans they couldn't care less Right, exactly. And one other thing, I want to get the name of that lady who interviewed Donald Trump back in the day. Because every time oh. you talk about it, I, can't, I okay. forget her name. All right. Okay, so- er- Erlene, her name is Liz Kroiken. C R O K I N. Liz Kroiken. And I've also written about her. So you can Google Liz Kroiken, Google Larry Elder. And maybe put the word in town hall because that's one of the uh, sites where my weekly column is published. Uh, and you'll see that I've talked about her and I've talked about the interview that she and I had. Uh, Mr. McConnell, maybe we ought to dig out that interview and replay it at some point. All right, 888-971-SAGE is the number. Regarding the crime in New York, we talked about homicides being up. Here's what the former NYPD commissioner, Ray Kelly, said. Crime is raging out of control here in, uh, in New York City. I don't see anything that's going to change the trajectory of that continuing to rise. There's uh, disorderly groups all over the city challenging police officers, and to various degrees it's happening throughout the country. We saw the Seattle takeover of the CHOP. I mean, that's been broken up, but I'm sure there's more to come. And police are generally backing off. Why are they backing off? They're backing off because their political leaders, the mayors, whoever's in charge of of uh, these police departments, and I don't mean the police professionals, but the elected people are telling cops to back off. Have we had here Mayor de Blasio said, if you recall, have a light touch. But then you saw the mayhem that happened uh, after that with the looting and the cops being uh, pelted with all sorts of things, bricks and bottles and hitting over the heads with fire extinguishers, that sort of thing. So we're in a very difficult uh, situation here. What a great idea. Let's replace the slogan we uh, protect and serve to, we have a light touch. Yvonne from California said, both my husband and I are in our 70s and are so grateful to have found Relief Factor. We tried so many other solutions, but none of them have given us the freedom of being pain-free like Relief Factor. Well, the three-week quick start is like a trial pack. It can be at your door in a couple of days. Let's face it, getting older exercise and just everyday living can cause pain. Do something about it. 
relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com, or call 800-500-8384, 800-500-8384. You're listening to The Larry Elder Show. Trending now on The Hugh Hewitt Show. Uh, Joe Biden came out of the basement yesterday, sort of. This is not really a press conference. Cut number six, where he admits he's got a list of people he's going to call on. Cut number six. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. He gave me a list of how to recognize. Is Alex AP out there? And then he slams Trump for his cognitive capabilities, believe it or not. Cut number eight. One of two things. This president is... um, talks about cognitive capability. He doesn't seem to be cognitively aware of what's going on. He either reads and or gets briefed on important issues and he forgets it, or he doesn't think it's necessary that he need to know it. But the fact is that at a minimum, at a minimum, the discrepancy allegedly between, if within the, the intelligence community has reported, Some thought it was more certain and others thought it was less certain. That should be resolved. The president should have on day one said, I want you to come before me in the in the situation room and lay out the differences. The prospect of this guy as president. I know you have an aesthetic. Some of you have an aesthetic objection to Donald Trump that he's mean, uh, that he he picks fights, he personalizes everything. But honest to goodness, slow Joe Biden. You really, you're going to trust this country in the middle of an uh, existential battle with the Chinese Communist Party that's going to extend for 100 years, and we're going to start it with Joe Biden. No, you're going to reelect Donald Trump. Stay tuned. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on The Mike Gallagher Show. Whole bunch of breaking news today. Uh, the economy showing some really, really strong signs. The economy added a record 4.8 million jobs last month. A lot of African American jobs coming back, hundreds of thousands. I think the president said 800,000. Um, economists and experts were watching the June jobs report closely. Our unemployment rate has dropped to 11.1 percent. That's down from 13.3%, so over a two-point two decrease in our unemployment. So that's good news. Um, they had expected 1.38 million. We got 1.427 million jobs added to the American economy. This is, of course, the delicate balance of opening up while trying to keep track of keeping as many people safe and healthy as possible, and we're seeing Welcome back to the pain-free relieffactor.com studios. It's the sage, Larry Elder. Today we pay tribute to the exceptional lives and extraordinary legacies of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. I am here as your president to proclaim before the country and before the world This monument will never be desecrated. These heroes will never be defaced. Their legacy will never, ever be destroyed. Their achievements will never be forgotten. And Mount Rushmore will stand forever as an eternal tribute to our forefathers and to our freedom. Triple eight nine seven one S A G E triple eight nine seven one seven two four three Larry Elder Relief Studio.
The governor of Florida is defending Trump's coronavirus comments, saying that the mortality for young people who contract the coronavirus is extremely low, uh, and the age at which the number of the people who are contracting the coronavirus is getting lower and lower. All of that and more. Now, we just played excerpt of President Trump's speech at Mount Rushmore. You know, a CNN reporter referred to Mount Rushmore as a monument to two slave owners. Now, I remember when Senator Obama went to Mount Rushmore in 2008. Michelle also went there. I think the girls went there, too. Not a problem. Bernie Sanders went there. Not a problem. But now suddenly the same monument that was praised when Bernie Sanders was there, praised by CNN when Obama was there, well, what a difference an administration makes, right? Kicking off the Independence Day weekend, President Trump will be at uh, Mount Rushmore, where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans. Standing in front of a monument to two slave owners. You know, a guy named George Washington, a guy named Thomas Jefferson. Kicking off the Independence Day weekend, President Trump will be at uh, Mount Rushmore, where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans, told that uh, be focusing on the effort to, quote, tear down our country's history. All right, Leila Santiago with that report. Thank you so much. On one hand, you have... Notice Jake Tapper, the anchor, said nothing. Reporter refers to Mount Rushmore as a monument to two slave owners. Tapper says nothing. 2008. The grandeur of Mount Rushmore. Senator Barack Obama visits Mount Rushmore. And reporter asks, can you ever imagine yourself being up there? He says, I think my ears are too big. He didn't say, I don't want to be up there with those two slave owners. Bernie Sanders goes there. It's majestic, soaring, grandeur. But now... Kicking off the Independence Day weekend, President Trump will be at uh, Mount Rushmore, where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans, told that uh, be focusing on the effort to, quote, tear down our country's history. All right, Leila Santiago with that report. Thank you so much. All right, Leila Santiago with that report. I'll tell you what, Leila, that was spot on. Tim Murtaugh is the Trump communication director. Well, there are a lot of examples of media bias, especially as it relates to President Trump, but this one really might be the most egregious example yet. Uh, Mount Rushmore is, of course, a a symbol of four of our great American presidents, great leaders throughout the the course of our history. And it seemed like over the last four days, the national news media suddenly discovered that it was a monument to white supremacy. And that's, that's not an opinion that they ever held when President Obama was visiting or when Bernie Sanders visited there or, frankly, ever before. Hillary also visited there. Nobody called it a monument to two slave owners. Now, I told you, if you watched the speech and then heard the coverage of the speech on CNN, MSNB, Hee you would assume that Trump delivered two different speeches because it wasn't the one you heard. Here's what Britt Hume said about this. So what she said is flat out false. And those headlines you mentioned from those newspapers were unbelievably misleading. And some of the other headlines that I saw were even worse than those. In fact, as I followed this over the weekend, I don't think I've ever seen such dishonest and biased coverage of any event. This was a a speech meant to be inspiring. And and even and even uh, if you think the messenger was flawed, the speech itself was quite strong and, and in some ways very positive. But no, 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 no. You see, he gave it in front of Mount Rushmore, which is now a monument to slave owners, right? Donald Trump chose the most grandiose symbol of U.S. imperialism on Earth to usher in a very on-brand, star-spangled spectacle. The mother of all photo ops, Mount Rushmore. And we know why this president just can't resist going there. President Trump will be at uh, Mount Rushmore, where he'll be standing in front of a monument of two slave owners and on land wrestled away from Native Americans. We have to acknowledge that Mount Rushmore is sitting on Lakota land. The place Donald Trump is going to 
on Friday is stolen land. He will inevitably and predictably talk about our heritage. In other words, he will talk about he is the protector of white America. And to indigenous people, Mount Rushmore with four white presidents, two of whom were slave owners, is one of those symbols. Questions have really been raised uh, about Thomas Jefferson in particular, but also George Washington for their for their holdings of slaves. It's worth reminding folks that the man who carved the monument behind me had deep ties to the KKK. Now, there are other issues. The sculptor, Goodson Borglum, was a supporter of the Ku Klux Klan. That, of course, is something in all the history books. Mount Rushmore isn't exactly the innocent ode to our founding fathers as described in our textbooks. And it's high time we disrupt that false narrative that far too many people believe. Um... I'm trying to figure out why is it that Republicans are expected to pay reparations? Republican Party founded to stop the spread of slavery. One of the founding principles of the Democratic Party to preserve slavery. With just a handful of exceptions, Democrats own slaves, not Republicans. Why aren't we defunding the Democratic Party? Defund the DNC. Nancy from Texas said, I love Relief Factor. I can do more now. Yay. After teaching riding lessons and taking care of my five horses daily, I used to be so tired. Now I can keep on going, getting more yard work, housework, and cooking done now. I have more stamina because I don't hurt. Feels so good to be able to do more like I used to do. It did take a couple of months on Relief Factor for me to really notice the huge difference. It slowly happened for me. Luckily, I just kept taking it, and the improvement is amazing. What about you? Three-week quick start is less than a dollar a day to see if we can get you out of pain. After that, less than a cup of coffee a day to stay out of pain. ReliefFactor.com, ReliefFactor.com, 800-500-8384, Trending now on The Mike Gallagher Show. whole bunch of breaking news today. Uh, The economy showing some really, really strong signs. The economy added a record 4.8 million jobs last month. A lot of African-American jobs coming back. Hundreds of thousands. I think the president said 800,000. Economists and experts were watching the June jobs report closely. Our unemployment rate has dropped to 11.1%. That's down from 13.3%, so over a two-point two decrease in our unemployment. So that's good news. Um, they had expected 1.38 million. We got 1.427 million jobs added to the American economy. This is, of course, the delicate balance of opening up while trying to keep track of keeping as many people safe and healthy as possible, and we're seeing grim infection rates and numbers still not horrific hospitalization or death numbers now the fear of course is that that's a lagging indicator i I see a lot of people on social media when somebody will say hey the hospitalizations and death numbers are not commensurate with the surging infection numbers people that are testing positive, and I see a lot of people say, oh, just you wait, just you wait, two, three, four weeks, it's going to be Armageddon. Well, we'll see. Let's pray that's not the case. And if it's not the case, then, well, they were wrong again, and they have been wrong many, many, many times, sometimes willfully wrong. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. This is Owen Strand for townhall.com. It was heartwarming to see many of the planet's toughest and best athletes telling their children on social media how much they love them. Call the Larry Elder Show now at 888-971-SAGE. That's 888-971-7243. Eldorado's Let Larry Know What's On Your Mind. To be honest, uh, I just felt really encouraged by it. It was phenomenally uh, documented. 
you know of, of course a lot of it was like preaching to the choir because of course i knew a lot already however it was just a good uh good reminder that uh you know that people like me do exist in the world and that there is like-minded individuals i think like me because to be honest guys it can be lonely sometimes i feel like i'm a one-man army and though i do have you guys a, a good community on 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 youtube and a few friends i have it still feels like you're alone a lot of times because you know whenever you're, you're alone you just you just feel defeated it's not like for example leftists or democrats they got their buddies everyone's there to kind of encourage them or back them up if they're to get into an argument or a scuffle or whatever but for someone like us you know usually if we're on the internet or we're talking to a person it's usually like two three people against us and we're like a one-man army so it kind of feels like man i'm really alone in this thing so watching that i just felt like man i was part of a bigger community Now, liberal writers and activists have signed an open letter calling for an end to this cancel culture. The Harry Potter writer, J.K. Rowling, New York Times opinion uh, editor wrote it. Noam Chomsky, the far, far, far left uh, Marxist. And some others, too. Fareed Zakari of CNN. David Frum, who's an anti-Trumper. David Brooks, an anti-Trumper. Feminist icon Gloria Steinem all signed a letter saying, wait, 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 this thing has gone too far. This cancel culture could get us canceled. And I'll tell you how the cancel culture could get MLK, Martin Luther King canceled in just a second. Stick around for that. Oh, yeah, he gave advice that today would get him labeled a homophobe. I'm Larry Elder. Share excerpts of today's show from Larry Elder's YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube.com forward slash the Larry Elder Show radio and click on the subscribe button. This is Owen Strand for townhall.com. It was heartwarming to see many of the planet's toughest and best athletes telling their children on social media how much they love them. In short videos, fathers played games with their kids, bear hugged them, and told them jokes, all in a tribute to dads on Father's Day. In a society that does little to encourage fathers, the NBA's efforts did not go unnoticed. Families are the essential building block of society, and fathers are the essential building block of the family. A home led by a father, especially a father with a spiritual focus and strong character, places flourishing within reach. Gender-neutral children do not need gender-neutral parents. Boys and girls need fathers and mothers bound by lifelong commitment. This isn't a prejudicial belief. Downplaying fatherhood sets us all up for disaster. Social media support is great, but we need more. We need a society that celebrates, honors, and ennobles fathers. I'm Owen Strand. Alliance Defending Freedom, fighting for those whose liberty is being violated. Trending now on America First with Sebastian Burka. It's not just about money, money, money. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs as well. And we're going to discuss the latest news with our new regular guest, Trish Reagan. Let's play the video from just a few hours ago from the President of the United States, Eric, play video. In June, we added 2.1 million leisure and hospitality jobs, 740,000 retail jobs, 568,000 education and healthcare jobs, 357,000 service jobs. These are all historic numbers. 
and 356,000 manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing looks like it's ready to really take off at a level that it's never been before. And a lot of that has to do with our trade policy because we're bringing manufacturing back to our country. Trish, uh, did anybody expect the results we got today? Talk to us about what we have heard just a few moments ago from the president. You know, I, listen, I, I was glad to see him out there. He he needed to do that victory lap because people need a little good news right now, right, Seb? Um, yes. I mean, almost 5 million jobs that were added. This is really incredible. And you know what it tells you? The recovery is underway. We are going to emerge from this intact. It's almost like, you know, you think about the Europeans, they like go away for the summer, they shut down for three months, and then miraculously, their economy just boom, picks up right where it started. I mean, we're not right where we started, but we're, we're getting there. And, and I could not be happier to see this news. Uh, again, I was surprised that it was as big as it was. We got the ADP, ADP report just yesterday, which indicated it was going to be good. But this good? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on The Mike Gallagher Show. The New York Times is reporting how Mount Rushmore was built on land that belonged to the Lakota tribe and sculpted by a man who had strong bonds with the Ku Klux Klan. It features the faces of two U.S. presidents who were slaveholders. That's an actual tweet from the New York Times. Now, Prager, you points out (laughs) that the same New York Times, which has a storied history, its founding editor was a guy named Henry Jarvis Raymond. In 1851, the New York Times founding editor published an editorial in which he supported a slave owner's a slave owner's legal right to recover his escaped slaves. So Prager, you had an interesting question to the New York Times. Will you guys also be canceling yourselves since you want everything canceled? How far does this go? Chris, you're well you're first up on the Mike Gallagher show. How are you, Chris? Good. I thought it was ironic that October 12th this year falls on a Monday. And of course, October 12th was the day that historically Christopher Columbus discovered America, which is the original Christopher Columbus, the the real reason why it's a holiday. I I, I honestly, I I mean, really, Chris, you got to help me here. You got to tell me what Christopher Columbus has to do with the racial dialogue that has 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 emerged after the killing of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis. Please connect it for me. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on the Dennis Prager Show. If Americans don't embrace some basic moral principles as their culture the country is over because this country is not homogeneous like denmark or norway country is heterogeneous ethnically and racially and in every other way the human condition comes so it is the only way america can survive is if everybody assumes a strong american identity which the left is destroying needless to say And as a result, you don't have America anymore. From many, we. Isn't that amazing? That was the name, I think, of his column. Certainly, that was the the topic of his column. Wow. I saw it early. uh, I want you to know it brings me zero satisfaction when they say, so I'm not... I'm not bragging to you. I saw it early. I'm only saying that I did see it early because I think clearly. And I have a strong moral Geiger counter. And whenever it comes near the left, it uh, pulsates. 
people want to say, oh, look, you know, I don't like either extreme. This is, this is the lazy way of not confronting evil. Well, it's on both sides. Really? When was the last violent demonstration on the right? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Obama tore this country down. No one stood up to him. Nobody. Because he was black. You need to wake up. My parents didn't teach me that I was a victim. They can turn back voting rights. Didn't nobody donate to us the right to vote? Who's your house, nigga? I didn't call you a nigga. Oh, okay, that's, that's a big difference. Right. Right. You're Uncle Tom. And Uncle Tom is somebody who has sold out by embracing the white man. Uncle Tom. Bedwench. Boot liquor. Black white supremacist. Chucking and jiving. House Negro. Coon. Uncle Tom. Coon. Coon. I have a Coon Award over there. Coon of the Year Award. Most black people don't believe that other blacks can be independent free thinkers. I believe the legacy and the ancestry of black Americans is being insulted every single day. I will not pretend to be a victim in this country. I know that that makes many people on the left uncomfortable. Racist, racist, racial, racist, racism. A thousand cuts of racism. The liberal will try to control a black person through the... Seven one S A G E triple eight nine seven one seven two four three Larry Elder ReliefFactor.com studio. There was a very interesting exchange last night between Don Lamont of CNN and Terry Crews, the actor. Crews dared to suggest that Black Lives Matter might just might be getting out of its lane and getting involved in a bunch of other issues that have nothing whatever to do with the alleged issue for which Black Lives Matter was formed to combat police brutality against Black people. Here is part of their exchange. You know, in the 60s and 70s, airplanes went down all the time. And the reason they found out why they did was because the pilots could never be questioned. And when you have the leaders of the Black Lives Movement who are now talking about, you know, if we don't get our demands, we're going to burn it down. Uh, other black people who are talking about working with other whites and other uh, other races, they're, they're being viewed as sellouts or called Uncle Tom's. It starts to start you. You start to understand that you are now, you know, being controlled. You're not being treated as loved. You're actually being controlled. Someone wants to control the narrative, and I viewed it as a very, very dangerous self righteousness that was developing. That you know that that really viewed themselves as better. It was a, almost a supremacist move. Let, let me jump where in. Where they view. Their black lives mattered a lot more than mine. Okay, so let me jump in here. There's a lot that you said. Um, you you think of Black Lives Matter is you said it's a you think it's an extreme movement. Uh well, uh, Israel's apartheid. We're going to oh. dismantle the Western patriarchal concept of a nuclear intact family. Uh, white people give us your property. Yeah, that's pretty extreme. Because it's now part of the no. What this is the thing. It's a great mantra. It's a true mantra. Black lives do matter. matter. But when you're talking about an organization, you're talking about the leaders, you're talking about the people who are responsible okay, for putting these things I got you. I got you. I got you. So let me it's but you, you, thing. Terry, you realize that even during the civil rights movement that uh, Dr. King was seen as extreme. That movement was seen as extreme. To people who don't want to make change, um, movements are seen as extreme. You can paint them easily. So we're comparing the civil rights move to ensure that blacks had equal protection under the law and due process to the false narrative that black people are being brutalized by the racist police when the evidence shows, if anything, cops are more hesitant, more reluctant to pull the trigger against black people. And because of the Black Lives Matter movement, police in a lot of our cities are now pulling back and crime has gone up because bad guys know the cops aren't there. Is this thing on? You're comparing that to what Martin Luther King did? As an extreme when they are not. 
This is very true. But also, you know, when you're talking about MLK, you're talking about Nelson Mandela and even Malcolm X, they all realized that you had to have a non-racial component to these kind of movements or there will be resentment. There will be get back. There will be one of these people will tend to you know, listen. I don't want to move from one oppressor to the next. And one thing is really who's, shocks who's me. the next when oppressor? At, who's the next oppressor? Oh, when I when I describe this, when you look in the city of Chicago, there are nine children who died by gun violence, by black on black gun violence, with from June twentieth all the way to today. And you're talking about even with the Atlanta child murders, there were 28 kids who were, who died during, in two years. You're talking about a month, and you have nine black kids. And the Black Lives Matter movement has said nothing about this. What does kind that of have thing? to do you know, with equality, though, it, Terry? I have to. Tell, I don't understand what that has to do with equality. Well, uh, let me try and help you out, Don, because the organization is called Black Lives Matter. And Terry was telling you about all the black lives that have been taken by other blacks. And he's just wondering why it is that Black Lives Matter doesn't care about black lives until and unless they're taken by white cops. Is there, there, listen, there's crime. There are people in those communities who are, those people aren't just being nonchalant about, about gun violence. I lived in Chicago. There are many people who are working in those communities to try to get rid of the gun violence. It's, the gun culture in this, in this country is prevalent, but I don't... The gun culture in this country is prevalent. Sounds like Pierce Morgan, doesn't he? I don't understand what that has to do with a movement that's for equality for black people. It's, it, it, there, it's not mutually exclusive that if you care about equality for black people, that somehow you're going to stop um, random violence or, unfortunately, kids from being shot. It just seems like apples and oranges. You know, it, 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 it's not that way. You know, this is the thing, Don. You know, black people need to hold other black people accountable. I said this the same thing. This is the black America's version of the Me Too movement. If anything is going to change, we ourselves need to look at our own communities and look at each other and say, this thing cannot go down. And, And this is the thing too. There are a lot of great, great people there who are held hostage, who are held hostage by people who literally are, are, are running these neighborhoods with violence and then claiming that Black Lives Matter. When you look at the parents of these little kids who are mentioning, saying, hey, man, why aren't they speaking up for me, too? And then this is what I'm saying. It's, it, when I look at this whole thing about, you know, it's about who is controlling the narrative. It's, not, it, it's got to be all Black Lives Matter. And what's happened is that because I even challenged it, because I even questioned and warned okay, people, Terry, I, I became sick. Like I, if I, I told get you it. to wear a mask, but Terry, they want pretty, to kick you out. You're, you're a high profile person. You're writing things out there. You know you're going to get backlash. You know people are going to respond to what you're saying on Twitter. So you, I, I just I don't think you should be surprised by that. I you know I have a, a skin as tough as an armadillo because of what I do, and I think maybe you should adapt that. But here's here's what I have to say. That's not too condescending. I have a skin that's as tough as an armadillo. Maybe you ought to adapt that. Uh, uh. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement was started because it was talking. Remember when uh, that actor was in Josh uh, Groban, is that his name? Uh, ignored him, didn't give him the props he wanted, and he went on television and whined about it. Talking about police brutality. I have a skin that's tough as armadillo. Uh. If you want an all Black Lives Matter movement that talks about gun violence, in communities, including, you know, black communities, then start that movement with that name. But that's not what Black Lives Matter is about. It's not an all encompassing. So if you're talking, I guess Mr. Lamont has not gone to the Black Lives Matter website because the Black Lives Matter website is all encompassing about um, if if someone started a movement that said uh, cancer matters and then someone comes in and said, why aren't you talking about HIV? It's not the same thing. We're talking about cancer. So the Black Lives Matter movement is about police brutality and injustice in that manner, not about what's happening in black neighborhoods. If you, there are people who are working on that issue. And if you want to start that issue, why don't you start it? Do you understand what I'm but, saying? But when you, 
But when you look at the organization, police brutality is not the only thing they're talking about. I know that. Uh, I agree. Uh, but that's not what the Black Lives Matter movement is about, Terry. Black Lives Matter is about police brutality and about and about criminal justice. It's not about what happens in, in communities when it comes to crime, black on black crime. People who live near each other, black people, kill each other. Same as whites. <sighs> Honestly, does this man ever go to the Black Lives Matter website? Read what it says. We disrupt the Western prescribed family structure requirement. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts. We foster a queer affirming network. I'm not even sure what that even means. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. By supporting each other as extended families, villages, we cultivate an intergenerational and communal network free from ageism. What does that even mean? Plus tax. I'm Larry Elder. All across America, The Larry Elder Show. This is Owen Strand for townhall.com. It was heartwarming to see many of the planet's toughest and best athletes telling their children on social media how much they love them. In short videos, fathers played games with their kids, bear hugged them, and told them jokes, all in a tribute to dads on Father's Day. In a society that does little to encourage fathers, the NBA's efforts did not go unnoticed. Families are the essential building block of society, and fathers are the essential building block of the family. A home led by a father, especially a father with a spiritual focus and strong character, places flourishing within reach. Gender-neutral children do not need gender-neutral parents. Boys and girls need fathers and mothers bound by lifelong commitment. This isn't a prejudicial belief. Downplaying fatherhood sets us all up for disaster. Social media support is great, but we need more. We need a society that celebrates, honors, and ennobles fathers. I'm Owen Strand. Alliance Defending Freedom, fighting for those whose liberty is being violated. Trending now on America First with Sebastian Verka. It's not just about money, money, money. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs as well. And we're going to discuss the latest news with our new regular guest, Trish Reagan. Let's play the video from just a few hours ago from the President of the United States, Eric, play video. In June, we added 2.1 million leisure and hospitality jobs, 740,000 retail jobs, 568,000 education and healthcare jobs, 357,000 service jobs. These are all historic numbers. And 356,000 manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing looks like it's ready to really take off at a level that it's never been before, and a lot of that has to do with our trade policy because we're bringing manufacturing back to our country. Trish, uh, did anybody expect the results we got today? Talk to us about what we have heard just a few moments ago from the president. You know, I, listen, I, I was glad to see him out there. He he needed to do that victory lap because people need a little good news right now, right, Seb? Um, yes. I mean, almost 5 million jobs that were added. This is really incredible. And you know what it tells you? The recovery is underway. We are going to emerge from this intact. It's almost like, you know, you think about the Europeans, they like go away for the summer, they shut down for three months, and then miraculously their economy just boom, picks up right where it started. I mean, we're not right where we started, but we're, we're getting there. And, and I could not be happier to see this news. Uh, again, I was surprised that it was as big as it was. We got the ADP, ADP report just yesterday, which indicated it was gonna be good. But this good? Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on The Mike Gallagher Show. The New York Times is reporting how Mount Rushmore was built on land that belonged to the Lakota tribe and sculpted by a man who had strong bonds with the Ku Klux Klan, it features the faces of two U.S. presidents who were slaveholders. That's an actual tweet from the New York Times. Now, 
Prager U points out <laughs> that the same New York Times, which has a storied history, its founding editor was a guy named Henry Jarvis Raymond. In 1851, the New York Times founding editor published an editorial in which he supported a slave owner's a slave owner's legal right to recover his escaped slaves. So Prager, you had an interesting question to the New York Times. Larry posts new excerpts of the show on YouTube every day. Just go to youtube.com forward slash the Larry Elder Show Radio and click on the subscribe button. I really felt like those were the examples of actual good black people, good role models, intelligent black people. Like, I love intelligent people too, uh, in general, and I feel like everybody, no matter what color you are, loves intelligent people. But just to see black people who just speak intelligent, know about their history, have good moral values, like that to me was like, it just, it just, that was just encouraging to see. And um, thankfully, um, I have a, my my friend who's a cop. He's a black guy. He is a, a officer, and I was just like, "Yo, let's watch this together." And, and he felt encouraged by it too because a lot of what the a lot of the what the conservatives were saying in that that documentary, he was like, "Man, I, I do agree with that." So even now, he's like, "Man, I, I I completely agree with that because he's going through our time being a cop right now, especially being a black cop." Triple eight nine seven one S A G E triple eight nine seven one seven two four three. Larry Elder, relieffactor.com studio. That's an excerpt from a YouTube video that reviewed the documentary Uncle Tom, which is available on UncleTom.com. And Mike Lindell is the president and CEO of MyPillow, and he's making face masks and giving them to hospitals for free all around the country. He's also offering great discounts on all of his MyPillow products, including the Supima MyPillows, the Giza Dream Sheets, the MyPillow Towels, the Roll and Go Anywhere Pillows, the Duvet Covers. The Giza pillowcases, the mattress toppers, the bolster pillows, the neck pillows. Plus, if you buy Mike Lindell's book, What Are the Odds? From Crack Addict to CEO, you're going to get free shipping and a $25 gift card. Buy one, get one free on all those products. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener specials, or call 800-890-1843. Be sure and use promo code Larry. Regarding this cancel culture, I just now mentioned a letter, uh, including signed by J.K. Rowling of the Harry Potter fame said, this thing has gone too far. You're, you're erasing history. You're, you're, you know, it's, it's one thing to have an intelligent discussion and have reasonable disagreements, but to tear down stuff. I'm surprised not more people on the left haven't said something. When the editor of the editorial page, New York Times, resigned because he dared to approve an op-ed piece written by a sitting Republican senator, a respected sitting Republican senator, Tom Cotton, when she talked about violence and said we're going to have to call out the National Guard if it gets too uh, crazy. A perfectly reasonable position, a position held, by the, by the way, by the majority of the American people. But there were some 800 staffers, New York Times, upset that this thing was even published. So the guy that green-lighted the uh, article resigns. Philadelphia Inquirer, editorial page editor, resigns as well. Why? He approved a story about burning buildings called All Buildings Matter. Uh, and the headline, All Building Matter, was so offensive to staffers at Philadelphia Inquirer, the guy resigned. Drew Brees says, I will never agree with anybody who disrespects the flag. Didn't say I will never play with anybody who disrespects the flag. I want them banned from the league. I want the commissioner to impose the rule. Nothing like that. He just said, I will never, disagree. I will never agree with it. Apologizes, apologizes again. His wife apologizes. Now, did you know Martin Luther King had a advice column in Ebony Magazine? And in January of 1958, he gave some advice to a closeted gay teen. Here is what this young man wrote, Martin Luther King. My problem is different from the ones most people have. I am a boy, but I feel about boys the way I ought to feel about girls. I don't want my parents to know about me. What can I do? 
Is there any place where I can go for help? And here is how MLK responded. Quote, your problem is not at all an uncommon one. However, it does require careful attention. The type of feeling that you have toward boys is probably not an innate tendency, but something that has been culturally acquired. Your reasons for adopting this habit have now been consciously suppressed or unconsciously repressed. Therefore, it is necessary to deal with this problem by getting back to some of the experiences and circumstances that lead to the habit. In order to do this, I would suggest that you see a good psychiatrist who can assist you in bringing to the forefront of conscious all of those experiences and circumstances that led to the habit. You are already on the right road toward a solution since you honestly recognize the problem and have a desire to solve it. End of quote. Now, again, this was written in 1958. At that time, the American Psychiatric Association viewed homosexuality as a mental disorder. Didn't didn't change that until 1973. So MLK is articulating a view that is a mainstream view at the time. If you want to judge him through the prisms of today's ideology, today's attitudes about homosexuality, you know, the way you're now viewing George Washington and Thomas Jefferson through the prism of today's perspective, then it seems to me that we should be reconsidering the monuments to MLK, right? Didn't he give advice that is deemed today to be homophobic, if not outright offensive. This thing on? Rick is in Atlanta, Georgia. Rick, you're on the Larry Oda Show. Thank you so much for calling. Larry, thank you so much for taking my call. I listened to you you for years, and I've developed a great uh, respect for you, and I respect your opinion and judgment. And so my my, I'm so I'm a 64 year old white male, and my call was about the. Uh, I think the slavery may have been a, je- a blessing in the spot. In in um, shoot, I'm losing my words. Um, I'm sitting here chain smoking in my car. <laughs> Sorry, you're you're multitasking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So. Um, I think uh, slavery may have been a blessing in disguise because um, through my education, um, I've learned that the the black uh, people that were brought over here from Africa uh, were brought over as slaves, and and over the years we had a civil war where hundreds of thousands of white men gave their lives fighting against slavery, Mm -hmm. and and the North won, which was a benefit to the black people. And and then I don't know much about history between then and uh, Martin Luther King, but uh, over that time, uh, the black people um, eventually earned uh, citizenship and and civil rights, and so through his, through our, you know, over 100 years, the black people have gained a tremendous amount. Well, Rick, I'm going to respond to this more thoroughly on the other side, but think about this. You're right. These were slaves who were sold, so had they not been sold, they would still have been slaves in Africa. I'm Larry Elder. Trending now on the Hugh Hewitt Show. In your opinion, did the demonstrations that were not only inevitable, but probably necessary following the murder of George Floyd, did they contribute to the resurgence of the pandemic in a significant way? 
I think it, as a, just a matter of intuition and common sense, I think you have to say yes. You look at the explosion in young cases. I know that there are some counterexamples. You know, in Minnesota, it wasn't from protests. It was from bars being open. But as a general sense, I think absolutely. I think the larger damage from those protests in terms of the COVID part is the absolute discrediting of the epidemiological establishment to be taken seriously. Because the second you say, you can, you, these rules are really important, will save lives, so you shouldn't do the things that you really care about. But the things that we really care about, it's a free-for-all. And so you, there's now just a large constituency on the left and right that will not listen to these people. They sold their credibility for a little sort of woke profile in, in response to a truly horrific, horrific thing. And you can't get that toothpaste back into the tube. If you said, you know, going to church or your parents' funeral, that is a selfish thing that is going to get people killed. But going out for day 11 of protests, that is an honorable and glorious thing and you should be allowed to do it. You can't have those kinds of double standards and expect to have credibility going forward. Read the Washington Post editorial this morning on this, because I am I am completely convinced the pandemic is back because of these demonstrations, at least half of it. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on The Eric Metaxas Show. You know, that's that's one of the significant things in America is we look at past generations through today's filter and today's lens. And you, you really can't do that. It's interesting to me that back in Genesis nine, when you see about Noah and God chose Noah and the Bible in Genesis nine, six says that Noah was a righteous man. And then it says in his generation. We know that Noah had trouble with drunkenness and other things as well. But when you compare him to where he was in his day, he was so far ahead of everyone else. And so what's happening is we're comparing our standards of today and trying to impose them back. And let me explain why that matters. We have 5,500 years of recorded history at the time of Wilberforce. England is the first nation in the history of the world to abolish slavery. And we're talking 1833. People think abolition and equality has been the state of the world all the way through. We're talking recent America, 1865, when we passed the 13th Amendment, 1865, we were the fourth nation in the world to abolish slavery. So abolition is a relatively new thing in the world. And by the way, there are 94 nations in the world today where slavery is still legal. So half the world still has legal slavery, and we're all concerned about America and how that we had racism in 1865. It took us that long to abolish slavery. No, no. We're one of the leading nations in the world in shooting for equality. We were not late to the party. We were early to the party, number four in the world. And by the way, we were number one in the world in passing a law to abolish the slave trade. That's 1807. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. America, we have a country to save. And now, here's Larry Elder. And yet, as we meet here tonight, there is a growing danger that threatens every blessing our ancestors fought so hard for, struggled, they bled to secure. Our nation is witnessing a merciless campaign to wipe out our history, defame our heroes, erase our values, and indoctrinate our children. Angry mobs are trying to tear down statues of our founders, deface our most sacred memorials, and unleash a wave of violent crime in our cities. Many of these people have no idea why they're doing this, but some know exactly what they are doing. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243, Larry Elder, ReliefFactor.com studio. We post excerpts from the show on YouTube every single day, so please subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. 
Just go to youtube.com slash the Larry Elder Show Radio and click on the subscribe button. And that way, every time we post a, a new excerpt from the show, you will be notified. 888-971-SAG. I was asked about slavery and about the fact that blacks who are here as slaves generations later are doing better than blacks anywhere else in the world. A sociologist at Harvard who is a Democrat, like all sociologists, his name is Orlando Patterson, he's black. In the 90s, in the 90s, he said America, with all of its flaws, is the least racist majority white country in the world, provides more benefits and more opportunities for blacks than any country in the world, including all of those of Africa. He said that in the 90s. It is still true today. And regarding blacks who came here as slaves, both Ben Carson and Barack Obama liken them to immigrants, even though, obviously, slaves came here involuntarily. Here's what Ben Carson said. A land of dreams and opportunity. There were other immigrants who came here in the bottom of slave ships, worked even longer, even harder for less. But they, too, had a dream that one day their sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, great-grandsons, great-granddaughters might pursue prosperity and happiness in this land. And Obama said the same thing, except unlike Ben Carson, nobody slammed Obama. Nobody said Obama was out of touch. How dare you compare slaves who came here involuntarily to immigrants? It's what the media said about Ben Carson. Obama said the same thing almost verbatim at least 11 times during his administration. Nobody said squat. Life in America was not always easy. It wasn't always easy for new immigrants. Certainly it wasn't easy for those of African heritage who had not come here voluntarily and yet in their own way were immigrants themselves. There was discrimination and hardship and poverty. But like you, they no doubt found inspiration in all those who had come before them. And they were able to muster faith that here in America, they might build a better life. D.C. is in Dallas, Texas. D.C., you're in the Larry Elder Show. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate it. Mr. Elder, thank you for receiving my call. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm moderate because I think uh, there's hypocrisy on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, but, Mr. Elder, come on, man. Uh, slavery, a blessing in disguise. That is so offensive to me. And let me tell you why. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe uh, I use. I don't, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, I don't, I don't believe I use the term blessing in disguise. No, no. The guy just did. Okay. Well, I didn't say yeah, that. He did. No, no, I didn't, Mr. Okay. Elder, I didn't say you did. Okay. I was responding to your previous caller, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, well, in, in a sense, you're responding yeah. to me because you feel that I should have taken him up to task for, for saying it, and I didn't. And, I, and I'll tell you why I didn't, D.C. We're talking, did, did, okay, you, did you see sir. Roots? Go ahead. Did you see Roots? The series? Yes, sir. Okay, you saw how Kunta mm -hmm. Kinke was, was captured, right? Yes, sir. He was going down the jungle, and some white guys behind trees jumped him. That's not how slavery went down. Right. Uh, these were these were blacks who were captured in, in battle and they were sold in mass by their African chieftains. And the reason this is important is Absolutely. because is because if you assume that a yeah. slave in America would have been a slave in Africa, then what makes you think right. his his uh, time in Africa would have been a whole lot better than this time in America as slave? He was a slave either way. Yes, sir. And so when people yes, say, uh, well, well, uh -huh. well, uh, uh, you know, we were captured and taken over here in America, uh, and some people feel it was a yeah. blessing in disguise, if you were going to be a slave anywhere, anyway, and right. uh, fast forward, you have generations after generations after generations, who's better off? The slave that remained in Africa as slaves or the slaves that remained in America and their, and their uh, uh, descendants later on uh, became very successful people? Who's better off? Can I respond, sir? Sure. I'll I tell you what, D.C., don't go and we take a break and you can respond on the other side. Now, Brian in Alabama said this about Relief Factor. 
After taking Relief Factor for three weeks, at least 90% of my pain is gone. My pain has begun to limit me in my mobility and my ability to get things done at work and at home. I'm amazed at the relief I have gotten. I should have taken, started taking Relief Factor a year ago when I first heard about it. Well, don't you make the same mistake. Follow the great Eldersky. Three-week quick start like a trial pack. It can be at your door in a couple of days. Over 70% of the people who ordered the three-week quick start go on to order more. ReliefFactor.com. ReliefFactor.com. 800-583-84. 800-583-84. Trending now on The Mike Gallagher Show. The New York Times is reporting how Mount Rushmore was built on land that belonged to the Lakota tribe and sculpted by a man who had strong bonds with the Ku Klux Klan. It features the faces of two U.S. presidents who were slaveholders. That's an actual tweet from the New York Times. Now, Prager, you points out <laughs> that the same New York Times, which has a storied history, its founding editor, was a guy named Henry Jarvis Raymond. In 1851, the New York Times founding editor published an editorial in which he supported a slave owner's owner's legal right to recover his escaped slaves. So Prager, you had an interesting question to the New York Times. Will you guys also be canceling yourselves since you want everything canceled? How far does this go? Chris, you're well. You're first up on the Mike Gallagher show. How are you, Chris? Good. I thought it was ironic that October 12th this year falls on a Monday, and of course, October 12th was the day that historically Christopher Columbus discovered America, which is the original Christopher Columbus. The, re- the real reason why it's a holiday. I, I, I so. honestly, I, I mean, really, Chris, you got to help me here. You got to tell me what Christopher Columbus has to do with the racial dialogue that has 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 emerged after the killing of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis. Please connect it for me. Keep up with what's trending. Subscribe on YouTube today. Trending now on the Dennis Prager Show. If Americans don't embrace some basic moral principles as their culture, the country is over because this country is not homogeneous like Denmark or Norway. The country is heterogeneous ethnically and racially, and in every other way the human condition comes. So it is the only way America can survive is if everybody assumes a strong American identity which the left is destroying, needless to say. And as a result, you don't have America anymore. From many, we. Isn't that amazing? That was the name, I think, of his column. Certainly, this, that, was the, that was the topic of his column. Wow. I saw it early. That, uh, I want you to know Larry posts new excerpts of the show on YouTube every day. Just go to youtube.com forward slash the Larry Elder Show Radio and click on the subscribe button. I know this is kind of like an unconventional kind of review, but, um, and I watched it a few days ago, so uh, some parts of it still kind of miss me. But overall, I would say it was a phenomenal documentary. I recommend anybody to watch it. If you have a black friend, you know, and they're, uh, willingly open to hear uh, another point of view I think that would be a great video because everyone's black so it's not from a white perspective per se but a lot of us are smart black people who properly articulate their points um, really uh, show real history give a highlight of the, of the Democratic Party of leftists of slavery like the right the you know the right truth not the truth that we've been fed by Democrats and leftist media but the right solid truth and again 
encouraging loved it so i can go on and on i'm gonna start rambling so i'm gonna end this video here but i definitely recommend you guys to check it out uncle tom phenomenal documentary uh documentary phenomenal black conservatives it was encouraging loved it so go watch Woo! it Triple eight nine seven one S A G E triple eight nine seven one seven two four three Larry Elder ReliefFactor.com studio. Going to be on the Hannity show at around six thirty five, along with Leo Terrell. We're going to be talking about the efforts to defund the police and also the exchange that I just played part of between Don Lamont and Terry Crews. DC and I are talking about uh, slavery. One more thing, uh, DC, before I put you back on, and don't get me started on the. Arab slave trade. You know, Arab slavers took more uh, blacks out of Africa to the Middle East and to South America than European slavers took out of Africa uh, to North America or to the colonies. You know that? And don't get me started on the death rate. It is estimated that around 10% or so of the slaves in the transatlantic slave trade died in transit. It is estimated that as many as 90% of the slaves died in transit uh, going out of Africa, walking on foot across the Sahara Desert. And by the way, the reason you don't see a whole lot of, of uh, descendants of slaves in the Middle East is because, for the most part, they were eunuchs. That's right, they cut off their you-know-what in order to make sure they weren't going to reproduce uh, and have sex with women there. Whereas on the American side, they wanted the, them to reproduce because the more slaves, the more free labor they had. D.C. is in Dallas, Texas, D.C. So I think it's important we talk about uh, whether we were better off. Uh, we have to start with the assumption that they, the slaves that were transported to America would have been slaves in Africa as well because they were already captured in, in, in captivity and sold in mass by African chieftains. In fact, even Ghana recently apologized for their role in the slave trade. Right. That, that's true, sir. So, D.C., you said you wanted to respond, and I wanted to give you a chance to respond. Yes, sir. First of all, I love your show, Mr. Elder. Thank you. I, I really I listen all the time. Thank you. Uh, when, when, when the individual said uh, we're better off or things like that, in that old movie, Mr. Elder, The Ten Commandments, uh, an older guy said, man makes slaves. God makes man. Mm -hmm. So whether the transporting of slaves is wrong, whether it's black, white, whatever gender, is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's evil. It's probably the evilest thing that has ever existed. It's enslaved human beings, no matter where it, it existed. Right. And DC, let's acknowledge, and, let's acknowledge it's, it's, yes, it's existed from the time the human beings are on the face of the earth. It's been practiced by every nationality on the face of the earth. It was practiced in Asia, practiced in Africa, practiced in India, uh, practiced here. Uh, it's been practiced by everybody on virtually every continent uh, and since the beginning of time. The real question is, when did it stop? And the answer is, Western civilization began questioning the morality of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Mr. Elder, all I'm saying is, let's be so very careful about making light of had experienced, born into, or being transported, or actually being slaves. Because, man, there is, to me, that being a slave I really can't say as an example, but it had to be almost worse than death. What, what DC, because, who's, ma who's making light of it? Yes, sir. Who's making light of it? Oh, no, no not you, sir. The, the comment. Okay, can, can I give you an example? I sure. heard a preacher once say, yes, sir. I heard a preacher once say that blacks were blessed through slavery because they came to, an, to America and they received Jesus Christ. That was so offensive to me, because first of all, God doesn't need man to enslave people to free people, Mr. Elder. Slavery, and I know you agree, I know you do, slavery is horrific. And in any sense, I think we should be very sensitive to those that experience that. I don't think in okay, any okay, way, okay. like I, the I, I, ab said, Absolutely, we should be, we, sorry, DC, DC, absolutely, we should be sensitive to anybody who's experienced. Do you know anybody who's experienced it? Uh, my well, no, I didn't know my great grandmother, but she was. But your, your, your great, your great, Elder? your great grandmother was not a slave. Not your great grandmother. Uh, my great great. Okay. Elder, I, I okay. Misspoke. Okay. I now, now, DC, that, that's that's the point. DC, I want to move on. The point is, yes, we should be sensitive to anybody who's a slave. Name one. 
They're practicing slavery right now as we speak uh, in Mauritania, in Chad, and in parts of Sudan. Is anybody talking about that? Yeah, that's, what, that's what's so ridiculous about all of this. This whole thing about reparations, about Black Lives Matter, wanting white people to transfer their property uh, from them to, to, to them. Really? Do you know anybody who's a slave? You know anybody who's a slave owner? And all this business about, well, black people are not equal. We haven't caught up. Was it, did white people stand still? Are they supposed to stand still and, and let uh, black people catch up? What does that even mean? Anyway, DC, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. 888-971-SAGE. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, is defending Trump's coronavirus comments and says, look, the age at which people are contracting coronavirus is getting lower and lower, and that's really good news. No, no, no. I, well, I'm not minimizing it, but I, but I think we should also have proper perspective. When we went into this, you know, there were people saying that, you know, 20 year old was just as at risk as a 90 year old. And that's just not factually true. We know where the risk is. We know who are the comorbidities that are impacted. We've got data on this now. All of that and more. Now, AT&T, 67, give me $76 a month. Verizon Wireless, 83 bucks a month. Sprint, $92 a month. This is what the average family of four is saving each month on their cell phone service by switching to Pure Talk USA. Looking to cut costs and free up cash on a monthly basis? Start today with Pure Talk USA. Pure Talk covers 99% of America. Yeah, the same network as the other guys, but at a fraction of their price. Their call center, based right here in America, their chairman and CEO, a U.S. vet. I love my iPhone SE from Pure Talk, and right now you can get one for just $149 with qualifying plan or save $250 off any iPhone. Stop paying too much to big wireless providers when your family could be saving over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk USA. Dial pound 250 and say keyword Larry Elder to save $250 off any new iPhone with qualifying plan. That's pound 250 keyword Larry Elder. Pure Talk USA. Simply smarter wireless. That's pound 250 and say keyword Larry Elder to save $250 off your new iPhone with a qualifying plan. Pound 250 keyword Larry Elder. All across America, the Larry Elder Show. This is Owen Strand for townhall.com. It was heartwarming to see many of the planet's toughest and best athletes. I got to duck out of here right away. Alliance defending freedom, fighting for those whose liberty is being violated. Trending now on America First with Sebastian Gorka. It's not just about money, money, money. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs as well. And we're going to discuss the latest news with our new regular guest, Trish Reagan. Let's play the video from just a few hours ago from the President of the United States. Eric, play video. In June, we added 2.1 million leisure and hospitality jobs, 740,000 retail jobs, 568,000 education and healthcare jobs, 357,000 service jobs. These are all historic numbers. And 356,000 manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing looks like it's ready to really take off at a level that it's never been before. And a lot of that has to do with our trade policy because we're bringing manufacturing back to our country. Trish, uh, did anybody expect the results? Share excerpts of today's show from Larry Elder's YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash the Larry Elder Show radio and click on the subscribe button. Great show this afternoon, Mr. Elder. Thank you for having me on. Yes, uh, I wanted to bring up the topic about how some realtors aren't calling master bedrooms master bedrooms anymore. They're calling them primary. But uh, what about people with master degrees? Larry, we uh, love your show. We love the data that you produce. We love the documentation that you provide and dates, and it adds more accuracy to your statements. 
Uh, we've learned a lot, which we didn't know by listening to you. Hi, Larry. My name is Jason. I'm 31 from New York City. I'm half white, half Japanese, and was raised as a liberal. And I sincerely wanted to thank you for what you do and, you know, opening my eyes to the reality of what's going on. As you can imagine, sharing your view in New York or what has become my view in New York now doesn't exactly make you a popular guy. And I think it actually says a lot about the attitude of the left that I'm oftentimes physically worried about my physical safety if I were to speak openly about what I now know to be the truth. Um, it's actually funny, but in a way I have quarantine to thank for my enlightenment because of the free time it gave me to look into things that I wouldn't normally have. And I just finished watching Uncle Tom and felt compelled to make this call my first ever to a, a talk radio show to thank you for what you do. Oh. Have I got your attention now? 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243, Larry Elder, ReliefFactor.com studio. Isn't that sweet? Mr. McConnell, did I ever tell you about the time I met a young lady named Jasmine? We became very good friends. And I, I said, excuse me, would you mind telling me your ethnic background? She said, well, I'm half Japanese, half Puerto Rican. And I said, oh, so you don't know whether to build a car or to steal one. And she looked at me with a straight expression like she was ticked off. And I realized that I had read the room wrong. And I apologized. She starts cracking up. She said, that was hysterical. But I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. The zip poll question I left you with yesterday. How worried are you about contracting the coronavirus? Only 14% said you were. Here's the one for tonight. Have you been to Mount Rushmore? Yes or no? Just go to your app, st- app store and download under Zip Poll USA and be sure and use my code SAGE, S-A-G-E, and we'll talk about this tomorrow. Have you ever been to Mount Rushmore? Either yes or no. Again, make sure you use my code SAGE, S-A-G-E, and I'll give you the results tomorrow. I thought the joke was funny, and she just looked, glowered, and I said, oh my goodness, and she starts cracking up. <laughs> she said, how did that feel? <laughs> I said, it's my kind of woman. That's enough. Put down the mic. I want to thank Larry for the job he's done. All across America, the mic has been dropped. The Larry Elder Show.